What's up, everybody, and welcome to Flagrant. We're sipping on spritzes. Summer is upon New York City. The mood is high. Izzy is now the middleweight champion. Let's fucking go. Fucking time. Slayed the ultimate dragon. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, he is not with us right now, man. We big, tried, though. Big let that. We tried. We tried. But you got to let that man celebrate in the way that he wants to celebrate. Um, it's great to be with you guys. We haven't had a boys up in a minute. Let's a talk, let's talk it's about it. It's been a while. It. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone here saw the fight, obviously. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck, dude. Yeah. Stayed up late. Stayed yeah. up late. Yep. Okay. Uh, thoughts about the fight? Son, I didn't know Izzy was playing possum. And then I was so fucking worried, and I feel kind of bad because my wife was like, why are you acting like you're fighting? And then yeah. I was like, because I was- hate it when people son, do that? Son, <laughs> let then, me be into something. Then I got insecure. Why and are you I'm, acting like you made the purse with Chanel? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't make the purse with Chanel. You like the purse. But then I got insecure, and I was like, you don't understand. He could die in there. And then she got super worried. Yeah. And then she, everything, she was like freaking out because she was like, oh my God, this guy could die. And then I spent 30% of the fight being like, no, but he's actually too good of a fighter to die in there. <laughs> but then we can't watch fights with that. You had a, real, you, had a great time watch watching that fight. Yeah. He said the same thing during Top Gun, though. He was like, no, Tom Cruise could die in there. Like, it is scary. Yeah. It is intimidating. No, remember when die. I was watching the, the last dance and my wife recorded yes, me giving yes, her the rules? Yes, and then yeah. I told her I was going to jump out the window. I had enough. I said, I had enough. No, no, I said, I said I'm going to go watch it at a studio. I'm going to leave you right now. I'm going to the studio to watch. But you already one. know what happens to Michael Jordan. Yeah, dude. That? You already know what happens. You know That's I mean? how important it is. <laughs> That's how important it is. You know what happens at church? No, no, uh-uh. Sometimes yeah. he'll freestyle. You go to church every no, Sunday, you know ends. the story. No, but he'll add some freestyle. Oh, shit. my the God. Start going on. He made a Bordeaux this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Last weekend, it was a Merlot. It's the little things, bro. It's the spice of life. Anyway, you could know the ending for something and still be, in, you know, in, enjoy the experiment. Uh, whatever. <laughs> See how excited that was? I I you point. thought you knew. I got a point on you that. thought you knew I was going to end that sentence. You didn't realize I was going to have a fucking stroke in the middle of it. That's <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to uh, the Mario Brothers movie. We're going to get back to that in a little bit. But um, <laughs> Izzy, victory. Izzy, victory. Did everybody collectively lose their fucking minds when he got that KO? Yeah. My yeah. dog started shaking. I was screaming so loud. He yeah. like thought I was. And then my wife was like, yo, people who didn't watch the fight think you're beating me up right now. Because hmm. I just kept, let's fucking go. I was going nuts. That's dude. what you would sound like if you were beating her up. I, I mean, just <laughs> high volume. Like, well, let's go, baby. Yeah, 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 you fucking yeah, yeah. do a three-point celebration. Yeah, I gotta get into it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Al and I, I watch it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to do an end-of-fight promo if you're beating your wife. You know what I mean? You don't gotta be like, I'm the cream of the crop. No, like, you, you can just do it. it. No, you, you got, got it. it. Yeah, you gotta talk that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you gotta finish her. <laughs> now, that's abusive if you do it you don't celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> because that means you do it all the time. Yeah. But if you do it for the first time, you gotta dance around. We're competing. You gotta you know use that you gotta drag her body to the middle yeah. of the living room and then sit on top of her and do this shit. Yeah. <laughs> People right, you're, you're celebrating yeah. your last yeah. moments of freedom. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get it off. You gotta have a story for the boys in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you just hooked her off one time and well, then that's it. You do a post fight interview. Like honestly, he was looking good in the first round. She was she was going for it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you could do that, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's where it's too crazy. You do that, Mark. That's what? where it's too crazy, Mark. It just died. <laughs> you guys were visualizing. You were just lost in the act. You guys were lost in the act. Hey, Mark, act, hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Tell us how you feel after that. <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she was good, but she was putting up a fight. And, you know, I thought she had it. So I thought she, she had it. Yeah, I'll, I'll put you out your misery right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hardest part of fighting. No one ever talks about that. The fighting is the easy part. He's going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> it's the post-fight interview. Yes, That's the that shit is tricky. You got to have your words all organized. Anyway, look, uh, so, golly, bro, did you get beat up by your wife last night? I'll be I honest, man, it was a tough fight, bro, I'll be honest, this is good. All right, Jesus. so, in the fight, Izzy said he was playing possum at the end. Yes. Part of me is like, I believe you. Is he bullshit? <laughs> the other part is Call like, bullshit. he caught you with the mean leg kick yeah. right before. <laughs> he landed yeah. a couple punches right before. Now, I will say this. There was another time where Pereira was closing the distance on Izzy. And then Izzy put his hands up and then started swinging with him mm -hmm. and just exchanged. This was earlier in the fight. I but that time, that. I think he went into it. Like he leaned he, into yeah, it, he leaned into but he went, and he got caught. But yeah. still, he exchanged it. And I, I remember at that moment, I was like, "Oh shit, hold on, he's gonna trade with them." Yeah, because that's a brave thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the guy who has knocked you out once, cold. Yeah, 
Last time you guys fought, KO. Basically the same way, like up yeah. against the fucking gate, like trying to slip punches. Exactly, right? So that was the moment right there, like the knockout. It was one of the most brave things I've ever seen. And also like one of the most like a cognitively aware things I've ever seen. Like he gets hit by a few different punches. Yep. He gets knee basically in the fucking cheek, yep. right? Massive knee. He gets a left hook, a deadly left hook that hopefully he blocks a little bit with his hand. Yeah. And then he does this great thing. He sees that Pereira is loading up the left hook again and he does this quick little pop yeah. jab and then that perfect right hand comes over. He rocks him and he falls in the same way that when he knocked yeah. him or we, we almost dropped him in the first round of the other fight. But this is the craziest thing. The second right hand he lands, I've only been able to see the punch at .25 speed. Yeah. The punch does this magical thing. And this is where, like, I don't know if he's watched so much anime, it's starting to, like, manifest itself. But, like, and I mean this sincerely. If you watch at regular speed, you see the punch get thrown, and then from about here to when it hits his head, just disappears. Hmm. I don't know if it's a glitch in the camera. I don't know what the fuck it is. But if you watch at regular speed, you the punch starts here, disappears, and then ends up on his head. Were you watching it on a Watch legal it, bro. stream? Can we pull I it up? To, I had to bring it down to 0.25. That was his Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, that that Wi-Fi. It could be. It could be my, my ESPN account. I got to talk to the, to the mouse about that. Hold oh, on. We got your stream up here See right what now. I'm saying? Yeah, it's see. Not yeah. Hold on, hold on. Computer he just, yo, he just punched him five times. He yeah. missed it, bro. <laughs> see? Yeah. All right, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. All right. Okay. So this is 0.25, though, right? Or whatever point. No. Oh. That's just buffering. Now... The quality of this is so bad, I can't believe you're actually playing it. <laughs> like, it's shocking. This is what you watched it I see what you're saying, though. It looks like playing. it's here, and then it's just back all Bro, of a sudden. It, I, I've watched it at 0.25 speed. That's the only speed where I can actually see that second right hand connect. Mm -hmm. It's the fastest punch I've ever seen throw. Yeah, yeah. And and then game fucking over. Mm -hmm. And then celebration, crazy. Unfucking believable The oh celebration is like, I mean, he's not a human being anymore. He's just an anime character. Yeah. Bro, the whole storyline, I mean... I, I'm just trying to understand the liberation you feel, Ugh. right? If you look back to our first interview with him, I asked him, because I didn't even think I knew, but I asked him, I was like, have you ever been KO'd? He goes, yeah, by some guy, I'm not even gonna mention his fucking name. I remember that. Okay? I remember that. Right? I went and I think looked it up afterwards. I was like, who is this motherfucker that's beaten yeah. Izzy, right? And I saw the KO. And imagine that, you're on top of the world. You're, I think at one point he was probably pound for pound number one. Everybody's going, nobody can beat you at middleweight. It's absolutely impossible. You're the fucking king. But you know in the back of your head there's a guy that got the best of you. Yeah. You've probably gotten the best of every other person that you fought. Yeah. Maybe you lost a shitty decision. Mm -hmm. Maybe you lost a shitty decision in China where shit is corrupt. But there's a guy who KO'd you and you haven't gotten that get back in. Mm -hmm. And then you fight in the UFC, yeah. and he takes everything you work for, and now people are starting to question you, other fighters are starting to chirp. And They're just like, like last time, you were beating him the whole fucking fight. Exactly, you were, you were a minute away, or a minute and a half away, or however long away from actually getting that, you know, getting that, uh, what is the pervert, what is the term? Getting monkey the monkey off, off your, your back, back yeah. right? I'm glad you said it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, and then to go in there and not outpoint him. That's what I liked about it. Yeah, he yeah, didn't yeah. win a decision. So, yeah. Out of the judges' hands. Yeah. Night, night. Of all the weight class, all the belt holders in every weight class, he's beaten the most people. Did you see that stat? Whereas, like, he beat not like nine finishes of nine different fighters. Whereas every other belt holder in every other weight class is like three finishes of people in the weight class. Yeah, because like, those belts be moving around so much. But it's just dominant. You have to be dominant over a long period of time, right? It's if you're insane. fighting three times a year, you have to fight. You have to hold that belt for three years to fight nine guys. That's yeah. if Dana White was even saying afterwards, he was like, you know, most guys they'll fight maybe once or twice in a year once they get the belt. You know, they're living a good life. Why do they want to go out there and risk it? He goes, Izzy's out there three times a year. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, it was just this amazing, and I can't imagine. That's why I really wanted to talk to him. I was like, what does yeah. that feel? What is the liberation of slaying the dragon? Of knowing you could beat a guy. He's beaten you three times. He's taken everything. And then you finally beat him and in convincing fashion. He can't say a single thing. He's unconscious, knocked out. What he did to you, you just did to him. Yep. What is that feeling, bro? Yeah. And I, mocking his kid right in front yeah. of him. Fire. The kid thing was amazing. <laughs> that was Unfucking believable. How does he remember all the tags? That's like, what I'm saying. That's right. Yeah. Like how after a fight you have the mocking of the kid, you have like this amazing speech that you give. Yep. It's fucking motivational. The like, bow and arrow shit. The bow and arrow, arrow Literally, shit. did he do the bow and arrow every time, Pereira? Like, every time. Every time. So he had that locked in. Oh, yeah. Because he practiced the improv, if you look at the improv from just a purely comedic it's standpoint. It's not improv. 
But it's like perfect. I wonder, if he, I wonder if he did three because he got beaten three times. Yeah, he gets the he bow. He did three arrows. He gets the uh, bow and the, the arrows. Kind of guy who would do that? Yeah, there's a great. There's a guy no trill effects or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did this amazing. Like uh, he adds animation oh, yeah. to the video and he puts actual arrows oh. in Izzy's hand and the bow. And then he, and he breaks snaps the bow. The bow. It's just Amazing. perfect improv. Like yeah. he doesn't like throw the, it doesn't disappear. Yeah. I want to know the moment, what he's thinking, the moment he sees the opening for that first, that jab, that yeah. left he throws, when he sees it, when he sees that connect and then he connects to right. I want to know his entire thought process as I, he's seeing I'm, all th of it this happen. Is my imagine, I'm imagining he sees Pereira loading up the left again. Yeah. Because Pereira lands a big left, but he blocks it. And then he sees him dipping to load it again and then it is just lightning fast. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things, I think he made a decision and I, I want to fucking talk to him about it, obviously, but like, I think he made a decision which is, if we get in close, he's going. I'm not going to hold his hands. Remember, that's yeah. what he was doing before. Oh, yeah. We're swinging. Yeah. And he did it earlier. He got caught, but I was like, oh, shit, he wants to bang yeah. with this motherfucker. He wanted to bang, but he also was keeping his guard up. And yep. I love, that's a difference. Like, yep. usually he'll be like this with it, but he was like this. No, we're doing and, this. Yeah. Oof, I'm so locked in, and I'm willing to take one and give one. And he got caught a few times by Pereira, and the chin held up. And I wonder if you get some confidence going, okay, he's hit me hard. He kicked him. Pereira kicked him once in the fucking yeah. head. Mm -hmm. And he got caught, but he, you know, kept his cool. Yeah. But I wonder if that was in camp. It was like, yo, I'm going out. If I go out, I'm going out on my shield. Yeah. Because you have to understand, when you decide to exchange with somebody in that moment, that's an all-in hand in poker. Yeah. Mm. Because if you get caught, yeah. someone it's bigger over. than you, stronger than you. And keep in mind, he's not imagining it's over. Yeah. He's felt it be over. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. bravery of sitting there in that moment and going, this is a 50-50. Either I'm gonna hit him and it's and it's lights out, or he's gonna hit me and it's lights out again. And he just decides to do it. I'm prepared yeah. to I, die. Ooh. And I think prepared to the die. The great part at the knockout was I think I think Izzy did get hurt, and that's why he moved back. But per but I thought he was like really hurt. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I yes. think Izzy still had all his like wherewithal about yep. him. So that's why like that first check uh, jab was just to see the distance. And then that's back. why the second one was perfect. Yeah, it and also perfectly. getting hit yeah. in your leg doesn't daze you. Yeah, it doesn't daze you. So he's all there. He's mm. just a little bit, what is it, incapacitated? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's all there, he's incapacitated. So he can think, he sees the punches coming, he knows everything that's happening, but he just can't move. And then when Pereira walked into that trap. Yeah. yeah. Now, True that's, Jordy, that's, I don't know if y'all saw, True Jordy did a great breakdown of the first, the end of the first round of the last fight. Oh, yeah. And then this. So I think Izzy was thinking, I had this motherfucker in the first round. If that round is three seconds longer, one second longer, I want I KO this well, guy. Well, 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 can I tell you one thing? And Izzy even said this. Izzy did something different this time. So last time he hits him with that overhand right. And he'd been reaching for that overhand right in the first round, too. Mm -hmm. He'd be getting getting close, but Pereira was keeping distance. He hits him with that big overhand right, right? Wobbles him. What does he do in the first fight? He fakes a right. And then he throws a hook. Yeah. This one, he said, no. Double yeah. it up. Double it up. Give it to the uh. next person. <laughs> this one is what hurt you. You yeah, get yeah. in this one again. And I remember when he was on the pod, he was like, I don't know why. I, I went for an uppercut and then a hook. I like faked an uppercut and went for a hook. He was, I should have just thrown the straight right or the, yeah. the looping right over. And he fucking did it this time. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, what a fucking. And I love that he didn't really take cheap shots afterwards. Like what do you he, mean? he finished them, yeah. and then he went for the the pound, and then he was out, and he was like, "All right, that's all I need to do." Uh, he got he got he got one, one. He, he got one but he he pulled back on the second one, and was like, "That's he, all I and need." And he said, "I put everything into it." He was like, "That was." <laughs> he said, "That was from the gods." Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was the yeah. gods. No, that was crazy. Yeah, amazing. But I didn't even see it as like violence. I saw it as like I'm letting everything out here. And I'm fucking winning. Yeah, I'm not. His guy's not getting saved by the bell. And every piece of like negative emotion I felt is going into this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think it was any like malice or wanting to hurt him. I think it was just I have to win at all costs. I don't even know what Izzy does now. Yeah, no. <laughs> like I don't, like, I don't care to see that, him fight. That is like that Muhammad Ali, fucking George Frazier, George one, Foreman, George Foreman yeah. fight. Like that is the one. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is Dude, the one it's here. like you beat it. Yeah. You beat the guy. You beat everybody else. We could watch you fight everybody else again. Yeah. Right. But I don't know if you're even interested in that. I think he was even mentioned that. It's like I don't want to fight the same guy three fucking times. It's yeah. like you've done it. Where is the exciting thing? There is one guy who's uh, who's doing some really fun trolling. There's a white South African fighter. Is this Pusey or whatever? Yeah, it is? yeah. Uh, Drake is Duplessis. Duplessis. Yeah, yeah. But he's saying uh, he goes. We don't have an African champ. Yeah. 
And it's the funniest thing, a white guy who's going, I'm Africa, I train in Africa, I know what it's like to be African, you're in New Zealand, tomorrow you're in America, yeah. Yeah. like I'm the only African that's gonna bring the belt to Africa. Yeah. But dude, the fact that a white guy is telling it's you that. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. I would love to see that guy get knocked out. Yeah. 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 I'll pay for that, you have to. Yeah. So that's maybe there's that want. fight eventually in Africa. You saw what they said about the oxygen thing? That he was basically saying, like, when I came into the promotion, I had a like a broken like thing in my nose. Yeah. Like my septum was all fucked up, so I could only yeah. get eight percent oxygen. So I, my gas tank was nothing. Who said this? Uh, the, your boy, what's his du- name? The du- 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 Plessé, du- whatever. Oh, du- yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he was like, yeah, when I came in, my I boy. Yeah, that, yeah, that was that was wild. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> the whites. That was that get back. The whites. Yeah, that was that the whites. The whites. Damn. Damn. That's crazy. That's crazy. Y'all though. let that happen. The whites. You let that. You almost. You almost let that happen. He's South African. He's the most racist. He's more racist than me. I'm saying he's African, bro. I thought he knew something I did. Say a word. That's your a word. Okay, go on. But he was saying when he came in, he could only get eight percent oxygen through his nose, and then. He just had no surgery, so now he's like, but my gas, my gas tank is good. Duff, what's it like to get 150% oxygen through your nose? <laughs> <laughs> the world is my oyster. <laughs> Asshole army, I've got some good news. We're getting back out on the road. This summer, we got the tour gearing up. I'm very excited. We're about to let it rip. Uh, first show is going to be at VCon, okay? That's Gary V's thing. He's doing it at the fucking Colts Stadium. It's going to be kind of crazy. I don't know what's going on out there. Then we're going to be out there in northern Indiana, Gary, Indiana, at the Hard Rock Live Casino. Make sure you check that. Then we're flying out to Pachanga Resort Casino. That's out there in Temecula, California. Then we're going to be up in Reno after that. And then we got the Great Outdoors Comedy Festival in Calgary, um, it's gonna be wild. We'll be adding more dates. Very excited to get back out there. See you all again, and uh, just cook up the best show in the business, man. So this is, you know, this is my passion. This thing I love doing more than anything in the fucking world. So it's exciting to be back out there. Can't wait to see you guys. TheAndrewShows.com. If you want to grab tickets to any of those shows, thank you so much. Peace. Okay, so so now he's nice because he's able to do it. That's now what his trainer was saying. He's like, yeah. now his gas tank is amazing. This is every young Jewish girl's excuse to get a nose job. <laughs> I have a deviated septum. I can't breathe. <laughs> they all yeah. The oxygen gets stuck in the hook. And then, you know, it, just, it gets trapped in the little cavity. All right, so let's see what yeah, happens good, with him. That's good. I, I think that. he's got a few more fights to do it, but it's a perfect troll. I mean, you want to see the white African guy that claims the black guy is not African I mean, yeah. enough yeah. go at it in Africa. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, great. that's... Uh, yeah, it's great. Oh, yeah, yeah. The whole content comes out for yeah. that. Yeah. Love that storyline. Um... Also, a fun thing for Izzy, like, I'm sure there's also, there's always a part of someone who, like, leaves their homeland that they don't feel like they're truly 100% that. Like, I wonder if, like, you, like, oh, I know you're Indian. Yeah, but Indians look at me like I'm the most American. I don't know shit. So you have this thing. But what if you could go to India yeah. and fuck up some white boy that said he was yeah. more Indian? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be the best. Yeah. <laughs> That's anime. Yeah, 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 yeah. literally. Izzy, yeah. fuck that. Go to Hollywood, get your buddy, bro. Now, <laughs> that's, 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 that's it. So bro. there's the other thing that he could do, right? It's like, now you're champ. You've just slayed the dragon. There's not a single person on this planet that they they can say that you can't fuck up or haven't fucked up, right? And they're probably going to start mentioning the John Jones shit. But Izzy can even be like, John is afraid of me, and that's why he ran up to heavyweight. That's already popping up on my TikTok yeah. feed. Is they're trying to The people are trying right, to get that. You want the wild one? Let me give you the wild one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alex Pereira. Goes up to light, light heavy heavyweight, race, 205. Yeah. Wins the belt. Huh. Izzy comes up to light heavyweight, fights him again. Double champ. Beats him double champ. Who's the heavyweight champ? John Jones. John Jones. Izzy goes up to heavyweight. Triple. Fights John Jones, <laughs> becomes the triple champ. Nobody's ever done it in MMA. Retires. I hope he doesn't do it. No, no, no. Of course, we yeah, want no, no. him yeah, to go to Hollywood and just make oodles yeah. and oodles and of money. And the damage that gets done by a heavyweight is just probably way different yeah. than... Of course. But the anime. Can we talk about yeah, anime yeah, yeah, for yeah, a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The anime. Yes. Yes. Like we were saying, have an anime series based on you, Izzy. Make a lot <laughs> yeah. of money. Go to Hollywood. Yes. Do that. It's very yes. clear. No, his uh, another New Zealander, Taika Waititi, who did uh, Love and Thunder uh, and all yeah, that, yeah, yeah, is yeah. also boys with Izzy. Anime. There's your, there's your movie. There you I think he gets the triple belt. And then fights Pereira's kid. <laughs> the kid. Fire! The kid comes up and av- tries to avenge his father's death. Fire! Yeah, now we're talking. And about if, it. if Izzy's really into anime, <laughs> you gotta let him win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta That's let like him win. He's getting that get yeah. back. The That's kid the will revenge. be like 17 by that point. You wow. know what I mean? He might have some power. Yo. Damn. Then it's a fight. 
nah, Izzy needs to have a kid, so then it'll be like Creed, Whoa. and then yeah, Izzy's kid yeah, comes yeah, back. Yeah, there you go. Come on, bro. Yo, we're good. great at writing stories. Yo, look at us, stories. Dude. Come on. <laughs> Light work. <laughs> oh, when man. UFC merges with WWE, they gotta call us up and start writing some storylines. Bro, you know what, what I mean? a great idea for UFC to buy the WWE. Mm -hmm. Not only for like the synergy with the fighters, like you can have the fighters interacting in each other's in each other's mm -hmm. worlds. Uh, which is a great promotional tool. Like, go have your heels be heels in the WWE. Yeah. You have access to all those story like writers who are great writers. They know how to write these storylines, right? So you can basically pluck them and say, "Hey, listen, how do we build this one fight between these two guys that nobody really cares about, yeah. etc." Um, but also, you have like a retirement job for a lot of fighters. Mm. Uh, so yeah. the popular fighters, yeah. Phew, Exactly, Funnel that you know man. have been like honest and done good job for the company, but they don't really have a way of making money after that. Let Nate Diaz go be in WWE. Isn't it still crazy hard in your body wrestling though? Not as hard as yeah, real fair, fighting. Fair, fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's crazy you even thought it was. Like wrestlers have convinced us, they're like, it's real. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's real compared to like being uh, an accountant. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> the one small pushback I'll give you, I'm, most, I'm mostly wrong. 5%, their schedule is so much crazier. You're wrestling three times a week or whatever. That's fuck, true, that's five true. times a week. So if you're one of these everywhere. famous guys, maybe you're popping in, popping yeah, out type yeah, of thing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and that the thumbtacks, you don't want to deal with thumbtacks. What is you know the thumbtacks? The hell in a cell shit. Come on, brother. You don't want to see Nate Diaz get a chair to the head. I'm too famous for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. work with Brock Lesnar. They had Ronda Rousey yep. crossed over. There's, yeah. there's, space. yeah, there's a funnel. I mean, yeah. Mayweather was up in that. Like, I mean, oh, sure, get but even fun things like Bad Bunny comes in, and then Logan yeah, can yeah. be. He's not going at every event, but yeah, big yeah. stadium things. It's, it's fun. What do yeah. you think of the antics around the fight? Like Trump pulling up. Oh my God! Oh, oh so Trump funny. is winning. Yeah, yeah Trump, is winning. Trump, Trump is winning. <sighs> Trump is winning. Yeah, I'm on board. I'm on board. That's the thing. I'm on board. He won me over. He won me over when he won money off of Kid Rock. I, even money I think he bet on Izzy. Oh, did he really? I think there's an interaction between the two of them after Izzy KOs him, and yeah. it looks like there's like a pocket, a handoff. Stimulus. If yeah. he if he did, <laughs> if he got that Kid Rock stimulus, yeah. dude, if he put money on Izzy, 100%. Apparently, the people I knew that were at the fight, they're like, when they showed Trump on the screen. They went, went crazy. Nuts. I heard the like, same thing. Insane. Like, it, the, it was the second loudest sound of the night behind Bro, the knockout. We were just talking all. about this in Brilliant <laughs> Idiots. On um, Brilliant Idiots, crazy. it's like, this is in Florida. This is DeSantis' state. Yeah. His literal state. Yeah. And Trump is going to wash him in Florida. He's going to wash him everywhere. The guy's too It's good. the primary night. You're going to be close. You know what else I realize is, is, is helpful? Um... The fact that for the last two years, we've had a president that is maybe alive, maybe not alive. We're not exactly sure like where, where he is. If yeah. somebody came out now and they were like, all right, Biden's been dead and we just didn't want to tell people, right? We'd be like, okay, we're not shocked, yeah. right? So we know the country can run without a president. Mm -hmm. Biden just said recently, I was saying this on Brilliant Idiots, that like, he's like, I would love to do something about gun control. I just have no power to do it. So, so he's basically saying the position is powerless and it can run without somebody who's coherent yeah. as president. So now that Americans kind of know it's just like a fun position, put the fun guy. <laughs> Here's if what it was a smart position, like if it was like head of MIT's research lab for cancer, oh. we don't want Trump yeah. there, yeah. right? But if it's like dean of MIT. Nah. Yeah. yeah. Get you Kid Rock in there. You don't want the fun up. guy because a fun guy doesn't know that it's just for fun and he's trying to do shit. Yeah, but but, but he can't. So it's like a baby. You're yeah. like, okay, nah, here, he the plane is coming. Give him fake nuclear codes. 69, 69, 69. There it is. He's he'll like, believe it crazy. and he, he won't believe use them. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And he'll tell all the other leaders, like, yo, I got the nuke codes. Yeah, triple 69. <laughs> it's crazy how horny they are in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big dick. That's what it is, bro. For real. He pokes out a little bit. That's it. So I think, I think. I think he's going to win. I think I think it's easy. They got to lock him up if they don't then he wins and the fact that they're trying to lock him up over some absolute bullshit compared to what other politicians do yeah it, it is illegal but it's not even close to as illegal as like what pelosi and her fucking husband yeah. do with the stock market or what hunter and joe biden have done with the ukraine or at the very least unethical yeah. it's it is it is way less bad than the steel dossier shit yeah did we talk about that like the clintons yeah, the dnc yeah, yeah, paying yeah, for the steel yeah. dossier right so it's like when you look at what they're doing, I understand why everybody who's in the middle, right? Like all the people who are like, I don't even like this motherfucker, but I hate these virtue signaling people that are just complete hypocrites. So because I despise them so much, I'm a ride for this dude. 
Well, you know what else I think Trump is doing um, additionally is he's not saying anything about shit going on here outside of like the politicians. He's not, he's not speaking on race issues. Mm-hmm. He's not speaking on these things that always make people be like, God damn it, dude. Now I can't fucking, that I would, can't back you. If he continues doing that. If he continues doing no that, way. it's a fucking landslide. So I have the way that he wins guaranteed. I just don't know how he does it. But I have the way <laughs> the that The winning he can strategy, win. you, yes. you feel you have it. 100%. What is it? He needs black women on his side. I don't know how he does it. I don't know what he can do to do it. But if he can get black women to be like, nah, we fuck with Trump. Mm, a subsidized Beyonce tour? I don't, I, it's like, they don't, they don't even buy Beyonce's clothing anymore. Like, I think Beyonce hey, might be relax, over. Relax, bro. I, I, I hate to relax, say it, but it's like, uh, Adidas, a Adidas let Beyonce take her clothing back. They were like, let's just go <laughs> on a separate, they didn't even let Kanye do that. They're like, we still need to figure this out. But with, with Beyonce, they say, keep your shit. Ice Spice running mate. That would work? No. Nah. No, we actually need to be serious about this. <laughs> yeah, but what can he do to win running, over black women? Anybody running who has black women wins. He that, didn't have black women the first time, my G. 2016? No. no 2016. 2016. Oh. Remember when he won? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We forgot about it. Was, I did, I did. It wasn't it was, because of silk and diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I just think if he yeah. can win oh, over, shit. it doesn't have to be all black women, but if he can do something to win over black women, it is a wrap. It is done. Because then he's completely free. White women can't complain about him. White women can't say he's an asshole, can't say he's a racist, oh, yeah. can't say he's hateful. Because yeah. black women, like, shut the fuck up, you're all those things. Yeah, so yeah, black yeah. women can say to white women, you're all those things, yeah. shut the fuck up. If Trump wins over half of the black female vote, you don't even need all of them, oh, yeah. half. Also, once black women fuck with Trump, Every black dude is like, oh, we free to fuck with him? Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's going uh, to get to the gays. The gays will pick it up. Oh, he- they, they Trump copy came every- out to Macho Man. <laughs> He's gay. He wears makeup, cares about his fucking now, hair. Now, Trump don't bash the gays. Yeah, I think that's the group he needs. He needs the black gays. Whoa. Because black women follow everything that the black gays do. Oh, <laughs> my God. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's the yes. group. But then how does he, he's going to lose the evangelical Christians. Oof. <sighs> what if, uh, but half of them are gay already. <laughs> he needs. He Closet. needs to. Yeah. He needs. Yeah. But they don't want to come out. They're afraid to come out. Mark, how do you? But do? you vote in private. I'm saucy Santana. But we bro. need it publicly. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. need. We need the public admission of support. How do we get that? I, and I, I've literally been thinking about this since we did Brilliant Idiots. I'm like, what would be the thing that they could do? What would be the thing the Trump campaign could do to convince black women that he has their best interests at heart? What do black women care about more than anything? I think they're children. Yeah. I think it's family. Respect. He doesn't check that box either. Yeah, he's not the most respectful. <laughs> but how could he convince them that he wanted the best for their children? That's rough, bro. Yo, what if he came That's, out? Yeah, yeah, he's gonna have to lie. Yeah, yeah. Gonna, yeah. Gonna, yo, what, if, what if Trump came out and he was like, he was reparations? Like, <laughs> yo, what if what if <laughs> that was, that was <laughs> only black men want that shit, bro? I'll be honest with you, I haven't heard a lot of black women talking about reparations. Man, if it's helping everybody black, it will be all I'm not saying they're against that it. Would, but that I heard would more, cost him the white vote, for sure. What, reparations? Like reparations, yeah. yeah that then he loses, landslide. That ain't gonna be it, yeah. But what can he do to get black women? What, Akash? <laughs> Bruh, this is a fucking uphill battle, dog. They hated him for eight years. Yeah. We're just starting to find him funny again, and the second he starts speaking on issues, people are gonna be like, God damn it, dude. Yeah. He just gotta stay away from all Who that. Who do they hate besides him? What do black women hate? White women. Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez. Oh. White. What is it? White. Is it like white men? Is it like pompous, rich white men? I don't. No, not really. Think so. No? Yeah. Not really. They just. They don't exist in their world. Like they don't pay attention to them. Yeah, I would. That's that makes yeah. sense. I think black dudes don't like white dudes, and white women don't like white dudes. Hmm. That's about it. That's I right. mean, I don't mean to bring this podcast to a screeching halt here, but <laughs> I do think it's an important issue. You've that handed we us a Rubik's Cube, yeah. yeah. It's a tricky thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. But if he can even do it, because it really frees up black dudes, because it seems like every black dude I meet absolutely loves Trump, but they're terrified to admit it. Stop it. I, I'll be honest. You're speaking on behalf of the two black dudes you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know more black dudes than you. Stop it. This is Stop not, it. this is not, just Come don't. On. 
<laughs> you might be right, but it doesn't help you. That haircut's getting to you, bro. Bro, <laughs> you don't even, your, your business partner ain't even black. <laughs> oh, really? It's a fake black Jewish girl. Really? <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's not how Trump will win over Say the black the truth. <laughs> That's not You gotta divide it. and conquer. Yeah. You gotta divide and conquer. Her name Go is on. Gila. I love you, Weezy. Don't do that. I love you, Weezy. But on, tell them that you're not actually black. Tell them you're from Morocco. Uh -huh. Just just speak the truth. You're a Moroccan Jew, 100%. Um, yeah, what would it take this for her to like delightful. Trump? Mm. This is really good. Mm. Real black women would have to like Trump. <laughs> 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 Sorry, we don't love you. <laughs> Weezy, I did it! I divided! <laughs> no. um, yeah, we just got to think. Who is the culture curator for black women? Who are the influencers for black women? Beyonce. I do think Beyonce. Really but Beyonce uh, don't talk. Beyonce doesn't have opinion. She's not like a uh, political. Rihanna will talk that shit. And yo, I feel if, like you could get Rihanna. I think you could get Rihanna. I feel like you could get Rihanna. Yo, 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 who did Trump get out of motherfucking Swedish prison? Oh, shit. Yep. Wait a minute. If he can get the gun charge in LA drop. Oh. If he can get that shit drop. <laughs> now we talk. <laughs> now we talk. Now we talk. Now and he comes out in Fenty. If he wears the yeah, Fenty yeah, yeah. beauty for his And she's a billionaire, shit. he gonna give her the tax breaks. Oh yeah. my God. Mm -hmm. We might be on Oh some. <laughs> we might. My God. Yo, free ASAP, Hold on, bro. this hat tight as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Waluigi, but this hat Look. is tight as fuck. Listen, if we get Rihanna, which is very gettable, she has two children, she cares more than anything about those children, he has to make sure that they come up in a world that is safe and supportive. she only has one, but keep going. She has another she one coming in again. Way. Oh, yeah. it has not born yet, but. When he's president, yeah. it will be born. I count that, technically. Yeah, oh, we know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> you look at Rihanna like they're still talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll say that during the first one. <laughs> Yo, I think he got to go after Rocky, bro. Yeah, I think he got to go after Rocky. I think he got to clear that fucking charge. He's got to get Rihanna on board. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, who else? We have Rihanna. Who else? Black female influence. Lauren London. I don't know if she has cultural stronghold she over does. black women. She really? Does, yeah. Half Jewish too, by the way. Is she really? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They be infiltrating you. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> Jews be getting in there. Maybe boy. make a Nipsey Hustle Day or something like that. Oh, oh my God. Ooh, that'd be fun. <laughs> During yeah. the New York City Marathon Day, just line those up. The marathon continues. Wow. Ooh, bro, yeah. There it is. There it is. That's good. <laughs> it's over. Wow. It's a wrap. Wow. It got it. So we're giving them too many ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, All I'm on, saying so. is I think it's very possible for Trump. And for whatever reason, I feel like the culture has shifted a bit. Maybe because, like you said, he hasn't really spoken on many issues. Yeah. As long as he's not speaking on issues, he can't be divisive. Yeah. And if he's talking shit about politicians, You're right. we love it. He's yeah, right. Because they're all pieces of shit. And, sorry, we look weak as fuck right now internationally. And tr Trump being there... Countries are going to talk the same shit because Trump will fire off. Oh, they know he's a wild boy, loose cannon. Yeah, it's. Um, I also do think that like us not looking good internationally is foreign propaganda. Ah, I think that you know China. I think that maybe Saudi, maybe Russia are doing everything in their power to you know put the gas on these stories that come out about like here's this union between these different countries. Like the world doesn't really want to use China as a reserve currency. Like they can't trust China. It's so like they have Grand Wizard. He might be one of the ops, bro. <laughs> oh he, shit! He's, he be pushing that propaganda. You be pushing Yo, that Grandy, propaganda. Grandy, uh... you gonna break my motherfucking heart, Grandy. <laughs> This whole time, every single podcast I go on, I've been promoting the greatest Instagram page of all time. <laughs> Grand Wizard chat, word I can't say. And in reality, you've been working for the motherfucking Chinese this whole goddamn time. Say it ain't so, bro. Yeah. I'm just tripping on Grandy. That's the best nickname to say that. That's the best way to say oh, that. Grandy? Is Grandy? Yeah. Fire, dude. Don't even sound remotely offensive. Not at all. Grandy. It's Grandy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You <laughs> can't even call him. spot in the South, That's, I that's think. where we get all our uh, geopolitic news from. Same. Too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. True, bro. Yeah, it's so funny when someone hits the group tags, but like, damn, you heard it's World War III? Right. And I've just been scrolling Instagram, yeah, and I know that. exactly where you got your bullshit news <laughs> <rooms> from. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but why yeah, would man. they do that? To what end? Because I think division here is really good. Yeah. I think yeah. division here is really good. And I actually think Trump will be the most divisive candidate. And they actually want that. Because as long as we're fighting amongst ourselves, then the, the powers that be within this country can't focus on you know, global control. So they want us fighting amongst ourselves as much as we possibly can. That's okay. like that Pentagon leak. The Russian media was picking it up yeah. and they were blasting it everywhere. 
Yeah. They're like, look at the, this league, America is so embarrassing, and look at our numbers, we're killing it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, they were promoting that shit on their channels. Mm. Yeah. And I find it hard to believe that that's the only thing that leaked from the Pentagon. There might be plenty of things that leaked, but they select the ones that are going to get the views. And when you look at you know uh, podcasts, when you look at news sources, what's trendy right now? What's trendy right now is the de-dollarification of the world. What's trendy right now is U.S. no longer the global superpower. What's trendy right now is China's coming up. And we've fallen for that too. So we're promoting the things, the propaganda, if you will, that, that is beneficial to the rest of the world. So yeah. some of it might be truthful, yeah, yeah, yeah. but to really de-dollarify the world is like an unbelievably difficult task. Mm. Here's my one pushback that's probably not great, but Trump seems like the firmest hand internationally. The like firmest he, I remember Sagar saying one thing he liked that Trump did is he was very firm with China, whereas most politicians, most U.S. leaders have been like, yeah, let China do their thing. It's fine. We want to be friends with them. And China was, and Trump was like, fuck that. Trump seems like he's the most stern internationally. Mm. Like international policy, y'all are not going to fuck with us. We're daddy. So division here could be worth that, but is it for sure? Because you're taking the chance on, again, like a wild card. Maybe, maybe they don't want Trump. Maybe they want Trump arrested, and maybe it's worth arresting Trump for some bullshit mm. just to get him out of here. Yeah, and maybe yeah. they're the ones telling the Democrats to put him behind bars. Maybe. Mm. And that's what's tricky about the TikTok shit. It's like how much of this stuff is propping up on TikTok and gassed up like crazy. Mm -hmm. I got a theory about this actually with, okay. the, with the Dalai Lama. Okay. So you guys saw the Dalai Lama thing where like he tells the kid to suck his tongue? Been mm -hmm. jerking off to it all weekend. <laughs> can I say, <laughs> wow. I'm gonna do, this guy's crazy. <laughs> so can I say one thing about that real quick? Yeah. That like, and you're never gonna see me on a podcast actually saying this, but China might be right about to bet. Clip it. China might be right about Tibet. I've been hearing this Tibetan people for the longest saying free Tibet, free Tibet from China's occupation or free Tibet, whatever. It's like, if that's what your leader is doing with kids, bro, China might be right about Tibet, bro. China might be right, right? Should we at least hear China out? Maybe. If the leader... The number one dude is saying, suck my tongue to kids? He is the god of compassion. Spelled C-U-M-P-A-S-S-I-O-N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, we got to hear China out. If I'm Xi Jinping, I'm putting this video on TikTok, and I'm going to see. Mm -hmm. See what I'm talking about? That's this is what, what y'all want free? Oh, that's what that's you're what saying. saying. You want this free? You that's want what, the, the weird shit is that this happened in February. Like, it's only popping up now. Mm. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, China saw it. It's fucking popping up on TikTok. They're propagating it everywhere. That's where I first saw it go viral was on TikTok. I'd be okay if they if they invaded Tibet. But with that being said. I'd be okay. Someone need to invade Tibet. Someone need to get him out of here. I think he this, is, this is, he's just trying to one-up Biden. He's taking Biden's rule book, and he's trying to be a great world leader. And he's like, what does Biden do? He sniffs oh, little kids. Okay. So now he's going full tongue sucker. He goes, nah, yo, bro. suck my tongue. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, we got to get Biden out of here too, bro. Like, I'll be honest, if Biden kept up the sniffing, because I think he's had, they have the sniffing at bay, but like, if yep. he kept up the sniffing. Yeah, where's he going to sniff This is fix? what happens to all religious leaders that have to do away with all their urges. Yeah, Buddhism don't Little work. Boys, Take that, Buddhists. <laughs> it don't work. That's what happens, Your bro. best, best. Yo, maybe your this people, Catholic propaganda. Happens, maybe they're like, yo, on, this God saying this, what yo, we're doing is all right. I'm going to be maybe honest with you. Maybe it's the priest being like, yo, get this out there. And listen, and listen. Priests don't do tongue shit. That's God rest the dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, priests don't give tongue. Like, that's so gay. That is way gayer. I will say, at least he's giving. At least he's offering something. Yeah, priests are just taking yeah. the fucking monsters. <laughs> but I will say this. It is, it is odd. And, you know, God rest the dead. And obviously, RIP, the great the great one, Gandhi. Mm -hmm. But there was that little kid shit going on with him, right? Everybody, he gave bad pushback when you hit him with this I do, shit. I do be giving pushback. Years I, ago. Because I hate it because they act, like, <laughs> they act like it should take away from his greatness that he used kids for fuel to do those things. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Like, he wasn't eating for so long because he was sucking kids off, yeah. right? Like, yeah. he could go on hunger strike. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Let me just say, I'm gonna just say it. I don't care. I'm gonna defend Gandhi. I got, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gandhi you let him babysit? Married. You let him babysit? Yeah. You gonna let Gandhi Come on, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah. Cause Gandhi's been reincarnated in this society. He understands. Maybe he reincarnated the Dalai Lama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We are all one. <laughs> Gandhi got married at 13. His wife was 11. 13 year olds then were not what 13 year olds are now. Talk that shit. All right, okay. I'm gonna just say that. Fucking Blackbird. Huh? <laughs> Talk that shit, Larry Hall. I hate Hall. that I told you about this show. Talk that shit, Larry Hall. Th 13 now. I'm not saying 1990s 30. I'm saying 1890s 13. Right. 13 back in the day was old, right? 
Son, that's when women started having kids. I mean, according to Jews, it was they were adults back then. The back then, you were adults. Thirteen yeah. bat mitzvah, adult. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. Yep. They didn't have this extended childhood. You were an adult. You're, Gandhi's married out the house. But that's not old, what he was doing. 11. He was an adult during adult times, and then he was sleeping with 13, kids in the room. You know how thirty is the new forty. 13 is the old 18. <laughs> but 13 is the old 18. But what about when he was old and the kids were sleeping in a room with him to test his resolve? Did he do anything? Only they know. There you go. He passed the test. He did nothing. He passed, Damn. bro. Yeah, that's, this, is, that's, this is to catch a predator. That's the Michael Jackson fucking but, defense but, right there. Nah, <laughs> it's like sleeping, sleeping with 18 year olds and not together. doing anything. Yeah, but, but here's the thing. Did he also if have I a spotted a, dick? It's actually hold like on. sleeping with 20 year olds because it's hold two on, years on, older. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If I got like a chocolate addiction, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to get over it, maybe I would sleep with some chocolate, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. that chocolate would be right there calling my name. Mm -hmm. Right, and I gotta know that I gotta break this chocolate. He's trying to win over yeah, black yeah, women. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is I mean? Trump trying to get the yeah, black women. Yeah. So yeah, I love Trump. I think by having the kids in the room, yeah. he's admitting to attraction. That that's the yeah. tricky. Bit. Oh no, I think people back then were attracted to thirteen-year-olds hey, yeah. because you were getting married at eleven. So a thirteen-year-old then is like a twenty-year-old now, twenty-one-year-old oh, so now. Oh, so you're saying they just carry that attraction until they're older? That doesn't stop. Yeah, they just looked at them as women yeah. in the way that we don't. Uh, the society. This is healthier and better, yeah. I'm sure. And you have an. Ex but also back then, you didn't have a childhood where you're like. Playing with dolls at like thirteen, you're a man. Get the fuck out of the you house. Know, inflation. Start your own family. Inflation happens. Inflation. Yeah, yeah. Inflation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That is an lot. interesting thing that you're saying right there. <laughs> it's a crazy thing to say, but I got to stand on it because it's Gandhi. No, man. It. I. It sounds like I'm about to make fun of you. I'm not going to make fun of you. I actually think that's a really interesting argument, which is like, but do you think that that thirteen is the best for him? That's, they just looked at it as okay. You have as soon as you're ready to have kids, you're a woman. Why wasn't an eight? Like why didn't you have like an eighteen year old fine bitch in there? So an eighteen year old, she you might be dying eighteen back then. <laughs> eighteen yeah, year old back washed. then, you like sixty. I kinda, I kinda get it. I get no, it. No, I'm seeing I what you're saying. <laughs> I get it. I don't get it, but I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I'm that last argument, on I just, just thought age of. and dog years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. Thirteen, she's like thirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirteen going on thirty. That's what that movie's about. That's exactly <laughs> what it's about. You guys have seen it. It's yeah. Gandhi biopic. <laughs> <laughs> it's him picking up chicks, bro. That's a great <laughs> argument for what Gandhi. Did. He didn't know no better. Son, that was societal. That he was got society. married back then. Yeah. Thirteen was an old bitch. Yeah. Son, his he got, wife she was had eleven. Kids. Yeah. How when she started having kids? I think thirteen. She had her first kid. If I'm not mistaken, it was 13 and 15 and maybe 17. I could just be making that up. But for sure, she had a kid by 13. So he was smashing an 11-year-old. That's a fact. Yeah, as a 13-year-old. Mm -hmm. That's an important part. He was 13? He, he was, was 13. But she was 11. Why do you keep saying he was an adult adult? Then later on when he was an adult... What they say is, but if allegedly, allegedly, look at you, look allegedly, at you, look at you, look at allegedly, you. allegedly, allegedly, he would sleep with thirteen-year-old girls in bed with him naked and not do anything to test his <laughs> absence. Oh no, 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 no! You gotta understand, those chicks were like you milfs. No, 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 don't do that. Yeah, don't yeah. do that. Black people, Michael Jackson, same shit. Don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> but also, yeah, Michael I don't Jackson, believe Michael. Michael. You don't believe Mike? No, you crack a ass. His son, his son, just that good. Crack but he touched them kids. Michael don't need to touch no fucking kids. He touched them kids. No, those kids got to sleep with. Mike. Mm. Yeah. It ain't the other way around. <laughs> you know what I mean? He still touched him. No, he didn't touch him. Stop, stop, stop it. Stop it. He looked at him. He didn't touch him. No, no, no. He looked at him. You can't away. compare Gandhi to Michael Jackson. Yeah. Gandhi didn't make any music. Yeah, Michael Jackson's yeah, way yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. He's he more talented, but he's not better. Michael Jackson's way infinitely better. more talented. Way better. Globally. For yeah, sure. sure. Globally. Yeah. 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 He didn't impact. Much societally, except those dudes' buttholes. <laughs> they weren't full dudes. That's, that's true. Yeah. Nah. Also, he More would just... people cry for Michael Jackson than for Gandhi. That's that's false. False. Yeah, I don't know anybody who that's cries false. for Gandhi. No that's disrespect, false. obviously. That's false. He died in 1947. Did people cry? Yeah, a billion of people. A oh, that's what's up, Jim. Oh, shit. That's what's up, Jim. From the top row. There you go. It's the top row. And he had kids at 16 and 17. What? He had his first kids at 16 and 17. He was 16 and 17. She's two years younger. She was 17. No, Gandhi 16 and his wife age 17 had their first oh, baby. No, no, they didn't wait six, six years to have kids. They did not. But is his wife older than him? No, she was 13. She was 11. He was 13. I'm fairly certain. God damn, imagine you got that wrong, bro. That's That'd be crazy. embarrassing. <laughs> you're trying to put your hands on him. Why are you trying to put your hands on him? Hey, Yo, Shiv, now. disconnect Dove's internet right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's racist, bro. You think he controls the internet? That's fucked up. Bro. You really think that Michael Jackson was touching them kids, yeah. bro? You Do you think that's why that he always good. had the band-aids <laughs> on his fingers? You think he, he was <laughs> you think he was blistered up from it or what? Nah, they was just biting. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Yo, they bite back. Yeah, that's kids how bite kids back. fight. Uh, kids bite back. Fight, just... <laughs> yeah, that's a so, good ass that's point. The spotted yeah. dick, it wasn't spotted, those bruises. Those are bruises, <laughs> Yeah, come on. Wow, dude, now it all makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I still don't believe he did nothing. But I never heard the spotted dick thing. You didn't hear the spot of that? He's yeah. young, bro. He don't know nothing about uh, that. I saw it. I saw it. I don't remember it, though. I don't, <laughs> I, wouldn't be invited. <laughs> yeah, he would. You wouldn't yeah. have made the cut. Yeah, I didn't like Michael like that back in the day. No, Yo, yeah. talk he about would have liked you. Uh, making a cut. Yeah. Can we talk about uh, Chris from Mr. Beast, bro? Because <laughs> Mr. Beast, mm-hmm. one of his boys transitioning, bro. Yeah, Mr. Beast trying to get that Bud Light sponsor cheer. Yeah. 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 Why are we clapping? Uh, uh, yeah. Which boy though? Was it the elf looking nigga or no. which one? <laughs> no, no, no. The Indian? But now, now, wait for it. That's my dude. You not went Tariq. first with with <laughs> Carl. It was anthotic, no. He went for no, not Carl. Gift your Lebanese. He went with what Elf. Safe shit. Yeah. Who is Elf? Nolan. Oh, he went with Nolan. Yeah, yeah. Because he's he's pretty. You thought that he was close. Yeah. But is that a is that a is that a safe way of you saying you were most attracted to him? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's yo, like he's the most attracted out to you, of all of them. Yeah, come on. No, 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 no. Tarek's so, got a body. Tarek is object yo, if you put Tarek in a fucking what is that shit called that free women in Saudi wear? <laughs> hijab. Hijab. If you put Tarek in a hijab, bro. He'd be cute. He'd be cute, bro. Yeah. Tarek is cute. Sorry. He got a body. He got a Ramadan Did you body. His eyes? Who? The elf one. That's Nolan, Nolan bro. Oh, That's same Nolan. shit. <laughs> <laughs> you just love white bitches, bro. That's what you ain't wrong with you. Okay, so you're saying of all the, the, the people on Mr. Beast's channel, of all the talent on his channel, yeah. you thought that it would be Nolan that would transition first. Yes, he has the most feminine features. Mm. Okay, and is he the, the person you would most like to fill up his throat with dicks? Mm. Ass probably first. <laughs> I'd start there. Really? Yeah. You want to fill up your ass? That is crazy. <laughs> that is kind of weird. I see, I try to go gay with y'all niggas, and it's, it's just, just too go much. crazy. <laughs> too much. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, now you. Tarek, obviously. Is... Tarek. Yeah, I'm the cutest. I'm yeah. on Tarek. Close yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tarek. I'm or, upset. Or Jimmy. Or Mr. Beast himself. He's star fucker. No. Yeah. I'm just saying, bro. Yeah. He's, got, he's got all the technology, wood, bro. bro. He got all the technology. So he's mad he's fucking tall. Wood. Yo, he already planned to leave you. Trying to some trees, bro. Go, go to Mr. Beast. He might be. I'm just saying, he might be the hottest. He's got all the technology. He's got all the connections. <laughs> you think that Jimmy's better looking than Tark? With you're the technology, mind, yes. You're out of your With mind. With the technology, bro. You're out of your fucking you're mind. Out, objectively, you think Jimmy? <laughs> yes. He's really he's trying. Better looking. He's really trying to go to their team. Dick right now. You dick right now. You ain't have a dick when I'm riding it. There will be no. There. Yeah. I'm clit riding. You don't know. Sometimes <laughs> I like to keep it like a fin. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think. If he did it as a challenge video, I think he's got it. Bro, should they he's all? Salivate, you, know? you saw, you saw it? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. He started doing something like and Nolan, bro. I, I, I don't know what that's to say gayer, right now, bro. man. I'm getting a little nervous. <laughs> so who you like? Dude, Nolan is beautiful. He's a pre- he's a pretty little bitch. Yes, <laughs> the easiest one that can Yo, transition. Seth, I put Nolan in a sundress, walk him down the Ave. Come oh, on, yeah, dude, yeah, it's yeah. over, bro. We collecting fifteen hundred a night, easy <laughs> with that. Now, no, got that is a little bit more ass, exotic. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, a little yeah. bit more exotic. Yeah, and I feel like. Look at that. That's bad pictures. Yo, you a hater, bro? For he real? Is, he is no, you a hater he for is, real, man. bro? You like this one? You like when he brings you cash? Nah, get him in the nurse outfit because that's what he's transitioning to. Oh, wait, 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 which one? Which one? Right down, here? no, down to the left. Down to the left. Damn, left, how left, you left, spot left. that out? Come on, son. I got yeah, that. Right there. Go that. Come on. Oh, to this the left. One? Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Come on, oh, son. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's General Woo-hoo! Hospital. That, oh, that, that's wow. That's General Hospital right there, bro. Let's go. Wow. Yeah, fine, okay. fine thought, it, yo. Now, my question is, is Mr. Beast going to sponsor the final surgery if Chris elects to do it? I think they should do it as a video. They should do last person take their hand off the dick wins it. And they all put their hands on the dick, and then the last one gets to keep it. I think that would be cool camaraderie <laughs> if he chooses to, to do post-op surgery. I think that's far. I don't what think what do just... you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, what, what is your perspective on that? They got to keep the dick. That's what cool. Is it? Yeah, we got it. We got it. Yeah. We got it. What do you think Marcus about that? Marcus in Orlando too long. Yeah, so. I know, I know. So Every time he goes back. What do you think about that <laughs> challenge? Yeah. What do you think about that challenge video? I, I think Nolan would win. That's what I think. <laughs> you think Nolan would win? I think Nolan Why? would win. What is your you know, reason? He looks like he would hold the dick the longest. Mm. Nolan does. Yeah, yeah. Wow, we really putting gay on Nolan a lot right now. I didn't get those vibes at no, all. No, I thought it's just he's so soft. Soft. Yes, elf Feature is very wise. close to fairy. That's a great point. Come on. If we're thinking about mythical beasts, yeah. the elven people and the fairies definitely Closest. closely yeah, related. Yeah, yeah. Y'all are forgetting Carl, though. Nah. 
No, we but- ain't forget. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. I'm kidding, <laughs> Carl, you cutie. <laughs> Carl is no, cute, But that's bro. the best compliment. He's adorable. Oh, like, son. you're the least trans Not in of the group. <laughs> Yo, look how cute Carl is. Go back to that one right there and right zoom here. in on Carl. Look how adorable Carl is. That's what I'm saying. He's a little cutie patoots. But can he you pull is. up the dude that's actually transitioning? Because yep. you had a picture up. Yo, yo, but that's no fun. <laughs> that's no fun no, to talk about to him. see the before and after. Oh, the before and after. Yeah. It's working, bro. Yo, these medications. Mm. Yo, can we give these meds to girls that are kind of ugly? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I know. I mean this sincerely. Before we address this picture, hold on one second. Hold on. Now, we saw that, right? <laughs> can we get, there are medications, right, that we can give to men, biological men, Hmm. And they become prettier versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. What is stopping us from just giving these medications to uglier women Mm. and then becoming prettier versions of themselves? Rounding up the fours. That's it. Make them eight. I'm I'm asking this seriously. Like real talk, that's genius. Thank you, bro. (laughs) That is fantastic. I'm transitioning to a fine bitch. (laughs) Why can't we do that? Let's do that. There's some dudes that need to just offer that up to Mm. shorties. Like right there. Yo, I love you. Yeah. I love you. But you're regular. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get you your know what I mean? HRT. Come on, <laughs> let's, go. let's get you on the PEDs. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, look at what just happened to Chris. Look how beautiful Chris is compared to when he was a guy. Come on, yo. Mm. Yeah. Come on, yo. Go back to when he's a girl. Pretty little librarian. <laughs> Come on, yo. That right there, Al. Yeah. Come on, you were boarded three or four of them. <laughs> Al, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, man. Do it. You want to let him suck that thing? Come, Come on, on, Al. At a house party in Four Rocks. Don't be stop hateful. It. House nah. party in Four Rocks. Nah. Don't be hateful. Come on, bro. With nah. the house party in Four Rocks. It's great. With He's still headband. transitioning. With the headband. He got a little more to go. <laughs> he got a little more to go, but the headband looks adorable, Amish. Yeah, the mm. fit you is fire. You know how fire. he could churn that butter? You're not going to let him churn that <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Al. Come on, Al. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because you need a glow up. Fellas, you need a glow up, and you don't got to be like these goofies that are going to get their body done, trying to get carved out eight packs, taking fat from their ass and stuffing it back in their stomach. You don't need to do that. You know what you need to do? Just look beautiful, look glorious, have the best skin in the business, and we can make that happen. Okay, we can actually do the same thing for your hair. And by we, I mean geology. Geology has got your back, it's made it all simple. You don't need 50 different creams like your wife, your mom, your girl, your side chick, okay? Geology has simplified the entire thing and they're curating it for your specific skin, your specific hair. All you gotta do is take one of their quizzes, it takes 10 seconds, that fast. And you know what they're doing right now? For a limited time, geology is giving you a free one month skincare sample set. Just pay $4.95 for shipping. That's all you got to do. That means you're getting over $50 in products for just $4.95. Plus, you get 50% off add-ons for $4.95. Think about that. Five bucks in shipping. Get your whole ship for free after that. And then you get your skin game right for the summer when that skin is going to be glistening. Okay? There's never been a better time to try geology than right now. So for this limited time, use the code FLAGRANT100 to get 100% off your personalized 30-day skincare sample set. All you have to do is cover the $4.95 for shipping. This is hands down the best deal that's out there. Better than anything on their website, but wait, there's more on top of that. They're going to give you an exclusive bonus offer of up to 50% off any additional skin, hair, and body product of your choice when you add it to your trial. Believe me when I say this, you may never see this offer again, so go get it before it's done, okay? That is Geology. Make sure you use that code FLAGRANT100, geology.com. Listen, your wallet sucks. Your wallet sucks. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's embarrassing. You take it out on a date, you're embarrassed. Matter of fact, you're probably trying to play, uh, pay with Apple Pay because you don't even want to show your wallet. Thread sticking out of it like crazy. You need to switch it up and you need to get the extra. I'm gonna tell you a couple reasons why. One, aesthetically, it's absolutely beautiful. You drop it on the table. This girl's gonna be like, does he work for the CIA? Does he work for the FBI? What's going on with this men in black wallet that he has? He got gadgets galore. Look at this, cards pop out, bow. You don't have that in your goofy ass George Costanza wallet, okay? There's just drying up coochies everywhere. When the wallet comes out, that's when drip season begins, but not with you. Because when your wallet comes out, it got pretzels in it. It's a whole embarrassing situation that's drying up everything. We don't need to do it. Extra's got your back. This is the other reason why you need it. 
trackable worldwide. You're not going to lose your wallet. Even if a motherfucker steals it, we're tracking that guy and we're going to get it back. And also, nobody can come boop you, okay? You know what it is. You pay with the boop. Well, guess what? People can walk down the street, boop the wallet that's in your pocket unless it's an extra because it's not RFID protected. This is RFID protected. It's boop proof. That means they're going to stop these people from stealing your fucking identity. Right now... You can check out the wallets at shop.exter.com slash flagrant and get up to 25% off site-wide with the code flagrant at shop.exter.com slash flagrant. Happy hunting, boys. Peace. All right, shout out to Mr. Beast um, and Mrs. Beast. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Al. That's Al. fucked up. Why is that fucked up? How you call it our beast, bro? What? But he's a beast. She's not married Women to can't be beast, bro. Mr. Beast. So he's just calling her a beast. Nah, but women can be beasts, bro. He's, no, he's talking about the future, Mr. Future, whoever Mr. Beast marries. Mr. Beast got a girl, bro. Yeah. Oh, I thought we were talking about this. No, no, no. No, shout no. out to his family. Why would you jump? When I say beast, why would you just <laughs> jump to Chris? Yeah. Yo. Why'd your mouth water like that, too? That was so weird. You got to chill out, Al. You were really right. on one today, Let's bro. just move on. Yeah. Let's just move on. All right, what else we got, man? Try not to, try not to give him Can you talk about work. the Mario movie? Yeah, did you, see, oh, that? Yes. Did you see that Mario movie? I did see the Mario movie. Did anybody else? Dove saw it. I saw it. Shifty saw it. Shifty saw it. You guys didn't see it at all. No. Shifty! <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm right now, I'm right now throwing my hat in Oh, to play Waluigi. Literally. I think God did that for you, to be honest with you. Yeah. You I might be God, right. God, you might be right about that. God threw your nose in the ring. <laughs> 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 Might be right. That was Jesus, bro. But I would like to play Waluigi in the Mario Brothers 2 movie. I say Mario, not Mario. You said Mario a couple times. Nah, B. Like, Andrew said Borat. He got I say Borat. He got money now. That's but I say Mario. Oh, no, you said Borat or some shit. Yeah. Borat. Borat. I say Borat. Yeah. It's Borat. That's not, it's supposed to be Borat. Borat. But New Yorkers say Borat. Nah, we say Borat. I say Mario. It's Mario. Do I say Mario? <laughs> you said Mario yeah. sometimes. It don't matter, bro. whatever. It's the Mario Brothers. Listen. Yeah. This movie, um, there we go, Shiffy. Yeah. So this movie, uh, first of all, great, a lot of fun. More, you were asking earlier. You're like, is it a kids movie or is yeah. it one of those cartoons that's kind of like for adults like as well? Like Shrek, yes. Shrek or Zootopia? Yeah, right. That has like a sophisticated plot line yeah. and also a childish one. Mm -hmm. This Zootopia is just for kids. Okay. This is just for kids. Uh. But what I will say is this: the way that they shoot it is really smart and interesting because at times it turns into the video game. Oh, like cool. they'll shoot something and then make it 2D mm. and you'll see the characters running across uh, like a cityscape and they have to jump on things oh, and then go cool. down, etc. cetera. And uh, there's a time where like Mario is learning how to exist in the world and he's failing. And it reminds you of when you first played Mario when you yeah, were jumping yeah, yeah, off yeah. shit and learning the rules. And, and I think they do a fantastic job. And then fucking, uh, what's the Jack Black mm. is oh, sensational. He's great. He makes the bad guy likable. He's so good. He's Plays almost Bowser. too good. He makes Bowser mm. likable. And they do it on purpose where like, you don't hate Bowser too much. Mm -hmm. Like the movie is great for kids. The bad guy's bad, but he's like more naughty than he is bad. Uh, it's fun and, to take kids. The nostalgia for uh, an adult. I went with the nieces and nephew. Yeah. If you have that, go. I mean, it was, yeah, it was great. And then they got over the whole uh, accent scandal pretty pretty well, don't you think? Oh, yeah. yeah what, what, was, what was the accent scandal? I'm sorry. I mean, it was insulting to Italians. They made the Italians look like a bunch of goombas, right? Like the whole, Damn. they're like eating pasta. and then No, but before that, the scandal was like yeah, John Leguizamo and folks were saying like it's Chris Pratt playing you know, they're white guys playing. Uh, Why does uh, Lake was Italian? Okay. Is he Italian? Because like yeah, they want roles. That's what. Uh, Any Puerto Rican? Anytime you see an actor complaining about you know representation, they just didn't get a role. Yeah, but he's not Italian, right? That's what confuses me. Yeah, that's what I've never yeah, seen he's him Puerto Rican. Mind. Yeah, but wasn't he? Mario or Luigi and like the old, old one? Yeah, you shouldn't have been that shit either. <laughs> oh, so he, that's hysterical. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just mad because like, yo, he they wanted to They didn't ask him to run it back. Yeah. 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 But, but uh, in general, no. the Italian stuff, they got over it that they played it cliched in a commercial. And yeah. so they were making fun well, of Well, they that. also, when the family dinner was there, yeah. but whatever, it's not that bad. I mean, like, one, Italians have a good sense of humor about this shit, but also like- the Chris Pratt and then the guy Charlie is that his what's his Charlie name? Charlie Day. Yeah, Charlie oh, he's Day. Great. Oh, yeah. Always so sunny. Charlie Day plays Luigi. Okay. That's and great. they're great. And then Sebastian Maniscalco plays this guy Spike. And he's great. Yeah. He like pops yeah. in in a few different scenes. He's fucking hilarious. And uh 
It's just a really fun movie. Did you wish Mario's voice was more like quintessential Mario? It's a me, Mario. He plays that up. So it's in actually, the commercial. So the commercial is really good. The, the, I don't want to give away too much of a movie, but basically they put out a commercial because they're trying to, you know, um, uh, get attention for their plumbing business, and they put on these like mock uh, Italian voices, like these, so. He said me Mario, and then they acknowledge it. Uh, they go, "Did we go too far with the voices?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the characters are acknowledging that they're not going to speak in that way, but they did for a certain reason. Yeah, yeah. that was smart. Yeah, it was yeah. really smart. So they get around it, but it's just a fun fucking movie. And obviously, we grew up with these video games. They wrapped around our whole childhood, and yeah. like you'll see little things in it. Like you'll see a Yoshi pop up. And he'd be like, oh, that's it. But it's not too much. That's cool. You know, like Toad yeah. is cool. It, it was Miles fun. brought it up to me that like they were doing screen tests with the Mario accent as like the traditional Mario accent for all the dialogue. Yeah. And that it was uncanny and kind of weird. Like it, it fits for like little taglines like wah, wahoo. Yeah. But they once that. a whole an hour and a half of that, I was just thinking that would oh, give me yeah. a headache. Dude. Yeah. Also, this is like Japanese people's idea of what Italians are. Yeah. It's racist as hell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Video games were racist. Back Mario is based on this the, like a super that was at a building in New York. And then with the, the, the Japanese execs. Yeah. You know, they're something like, well, this is that, what right? we think Italians are. It's just like if you watch Mike Tyson's Punch Out, like every one of those characters is like racist as hell. <laughs> this is back in the day where you could kind of be like in- incredibly stereotypical in video games because they, they just look at exposure. them. Yeah, but they also looked at them as an extension of cartoons. Uh, so if you watch like old cartoons, they didn't have time to explain the complexity of, of characters. Right. They'd just be like, okay, here's brown guy. Yeah. Sim Sim Salabim. Yeah. In, yeah. Uh, what Johnny was that Quest. called? Johnny Quest. Yeah. Exactly. Haji, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I thought it was. I thought it was like fun and cool. My my wife, obviously, different generation than me. Yeah. And I don't think she grew up really playing the games as much. Like she played Mario Kart. Yeah. There's even an homage to Mario Kart in it, uh, which is fire. kind of fire. And um, so yeah, I just thought it was cool. Like I would recommend you go see it, but set your expectations at this is a kids' movie that you're gonna watch, yeah. not. This is Zootopia, and it's going to describe complex or racial like dynamics. Yeah. 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 yeah, everyone go to Illumination and the uh, Instagram and uh, petition for Schultz to be is there a, a Wario Luigi in this one. No, there's no Wario, no Waluigi. I think that you bring those characters in later. Yeah, mm-hmm. the whole world's yeah. being created. This is Illumination yeah. that did Despicable Me, Minions. Mm-hmm. What else did they do? They did. Uh, oh, uh, 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 Sing and Sing. Uh, what is the other thing with minions? The guy grew. Uh, oh, oh, that's yeah, despicable yeah, yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. think you have what it takes to be Waluigi, bro? I think I do. I'll be honest with you guys. I've never seen him in a game. I've never played with him. <laughs> See, it started. No, exactly. I didn't even know who Waluigi was until the internet started saying I look like Waluigi. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what the character was because I never played him. In we any never played game. it. Yeah. Well, could we you play of, him? We were out of video games at that point. I think, or out of Mario at least. Mario but not Mario in the Kart. old Mario Karts. <clears throat> I think he might have been in the old ones. I don't think so. Yeah, no, we mess with, with Yoshi a lot. Not in our Mario Kart. Wario? You couldn't even be Wario in the old Mario Kart. It was just Yoshi, Mario, Luigi, Princess, Toad, Bowser. Wow. All right. Well, it, it obviously voice acting takes more than just looking like him. You got to sound like him. Let me see what he sounds like. Waluigi time. Waluigi time. That was really good. Yeah. Okay, all right. That was really yeah, good. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> That's the what? that's the jump, bro. Okay, keep going. Next one. Wow, wow. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's uncanny. <laughs> <laughs> you do that noise already. Yeah, actually, I've heard baby. that noise. Before. What I do is called thirty nine. Ha 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 wow. Ha 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 wow. That needs a little work. <laughs> yeah, needs a little work. Out. Out. <laughs> it needs a little work. Does he got words, yo? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know if I want this role. <laughs> I don't know if I want this role, yo. Go. Waluigi time. You're back at one. Waluigi time. This is done, bro. (laughs) If that's all I got to say, they got to give me this role immediately. I want Pedro Pascal for uh, Wario. I I mean, what are they doing that because of the SNL? He did that in the movie. He did. I think he did an SNL, right? Um, Yeah. I mean, he's just on fire right now. So absolutely, he's the best, dude. He's going. That is the power of having an impactful role an endearing and impactful role is that people take, they take the relationship that you have in the show Mm -hmm. and they superimpose that onto who you are as a man. Yeah. So like we look at superheroes as that in real life. Yeah. Like people think Michael B. Jordan can box, right? 
That you look at He's still a decimal. Yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> Pedro Pascal, we think, is like the sweetest, kindest man that just cares for an orphan girl and he's gonna look out for her, which he may be. Yeah. But we truly believe he would risk his life for this yeah. girl. And uh, I wonder if as you're crafting an actor's career, you look at a guy like Leonardo DiCaprio. I wonder if there's like specific things that they're taking so that you can like create this archetype for who this imaginary person is. Oh, yeah. For sure. Like I you bet know? you like villain roles will come up after you have like a hot role and they're like, nah, we can't. We can't do it right now. Yeah. Cause we're still building his character. As like a leading man. Is he face. brave? Yeah. Yes. Is he willing to sacrifice himself? Titanic. Yes, he's willing to die. Mm. Is he, or I think it was Romeo and Juliet as well. He's willing to die for his love. Yeah. Okay, now women are like, that man's willing to die for me. I want a man who will love me in that way. Okay, now you need to put him in something, I mean, we're fast forwarding, but it's like, we need the love role on the beach. Women just want all of them, yeah. the, the, the beach or whatever. Then you have, I, you go later in his career, you look at a movie like Inception. Here's like a sophisticated guy who's fear smart. Fear and loathing, he's gotta be a crackhead or some shit. Was we he got, in Fear and Loathing? I think so, right? No, 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 DiCaprio? that was, uh, Did, that was Johnny, Johnny Depp. Depp. Oh, fuck. Johnny Depp, Johnny yeah. Depp. Johnny Depp is another interesting one. You know, he went through for more like kind of weird roles. Yeah, artsy stuff. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it kind of stopped us from looking at him as a person and we look at him more as a character. Mm -hmm. Like Johnny Depp feels like an extension of all of his characters, yeah. where Leo is like, no, you're just playing Leo yeah. as the Titanic person, mm. right? Yeah. Like, um, yeah, I wonder if as like a manager or an agent, you're think thinking of that. Like with Timothy Chalamet, what are they doing right now? Mm -hmm. Like, what's the plan? We're like, okay, you're Dune, you're gonna save the universe, everybody's gonna love you. What's the next move? I heard Will Smith mapped out his entire career before. What did he do? Like he had a very specific, like I'm gonna do a buddy cop movie and then I'm gonna do an alien movie. And it was more genre specific, I think. Mm. But like apparently he had everything mapped out of this is how I'm gonna become Because once star you get control, you gotta be specific. It's like he did Independence Day, he saves the world. Yeah. Okay. Now you go, I'm save the world guy. Yeah. I need to be save the world guy and leading man guy. Yeah. So what's the next project that allows me to do that? I need to be save the world guy and get the baddest bitch in the room guy. Mm. So all the women realize that I'm a heartthrob and they right. gotta love me. Mm. Right. Right? Mm. It's like carefully curating that. So you know what Chalamet has coming out? Talk to me. Dune 2, but then Wonka. He's gonna play a young Willy Wonka and it's a story of how he met the Oompa Loompas. So here's an interesting one. Whoa. So it's here's the thing about luck. that. No, 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 no. This is the thing about that. I thought they were trying to make Timothy Chalamet the next Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm -hmm. yeah. and that is a Johnny Depp move. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying that because Johnny was Willy Wonka. What I'm saying is because he's going to play a character that removes himself from what we think he is. Like right now we think Timothy Chalamet is a little piece of the guy he's playing in Doom and a little piece of the guy he's playing the, the rom-coms or whatever yeah. he did. This is a character. Now we start to be a little bit uh, blurry in terms of who he is, which might work if he wants to play these character pieces. Yeah, I think it's that. He's a theater kid from he New York. To, he wants he to was act, in, act He was in yeah. Wes Anderson's French Dispatch. Yeah, like oh, he likes right. these roles. DiCaprio so, he works with the same five directors. Drama, 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 drama. So you look at, it, this is interesting. Like you look at a guy like Denzel, which has also been carefully crafted. Yeah. And like, obviously there's gonna be certain opportunities that are provided to him uh, or certain opportunities that he can have and he has to kind of like earn in a different way than a white actor, go. Miles has a story about Denzel. What was it that they, there was Can some, I just get this point yeah. out real quick? So it's it's like, like for example, he's gonna play a famous black person. Yeah. Right? He's gonna play the racial movie stuff as well. I think, what was it called? Uh, Glory. Glory, exactly, yeah. right? And it's almost like, here are the opportunities for black actors at this time. You're gonna either play super famous black guy or a black guy in this role where like a white guy was like really good to black people at a time where he should have been mean. Uh, but he exceeds and he kills it, right? And then he has, then they have to go, okay, how do we make him just superstar? Mm -hmm. How do we not make him black superstar, just superstar? They did that with Will and they did that with Denzel brilliantly. Mm. How do we make him heartthrob? Because there was a time where everybody would talk about Denzel as like the most, oh, yeah. the best looking yeah. man on the yeah. planet. Decades. Right? Like he was number one. He was, yeah. the, I think GQ's <clears throat> the hottest guy or whatever like yeah. that. How do they do that? Yes, he's a handsome guy, but it's more than that. That's where managers really get their cut, right? Like if you're like crafting that shit, like Will Smith fumbled with uh, The Matrix. Like he was, he was supposed to be Neo. <laughs> yeah. 
and then did Wild Wild West instead. But of that's it. but that's the thing. It's like Will Bumble. Smith, different than than Denzel, is they always based his. They called it. Um, he would do event films, so a big Christmas movie or Thanksgiving and a Christmas, and a big summer block. Yeah, box Mr. Fourth of July. And the and goal was, for yeah. him to get to is he was one of the. The three people that were offered the top role in whatever movie first, it's Brad Pitt, Will Smith, DiCaprio. Like DiCaprio would be third. Like Will Smith, I said this before, was offered Inception before DiCaprio wow. and just didn't get it in the same way. Uh, so that's just kind of like you get to that level. It doesn't matter race, this yeah. or that. It's just like what I need is to, your draw? I'm box office. Yeah, Give it to me and let me see. And that's why it kind of looks a little. The Timothy Chalamet one seems weird though. What's like that? Him going and trying to get the Oompa Loompas. Yo, because I, I can't imagine that shit's gonna be good. I think it's just because we look at him like, ah, oh, he's clearly gonna go like You're the, the heart guys. Yeah, he's the going from that, and so now he's weird. in pre-production. Where is he gonna for, get the Oompa Loompas? Though? <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm worried about. Haven't read it, but then he's, he's gonna, gonna go, go South and America be Bob Dylan. These kids, and then he's gonna go super method actor Bob Dylan, and so, he's gonna sing Bob Dylan songs. So live. Timothy it's, and his people think that he's Johnny Depp. Not that he is that, but they like that career trajectory where Johnny played certain famous people. I think Johnny played Whitey Bulger. Yeah. Remember yeah. Uh, that famous Boston yeah, 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 Irish yeah. gangster or something like that? Yeah. Like, and um, Johnny went and, and he played- uh, Whatever Tim it, Burton wanted a. But it was also play. Bonnie and Clyde, wasn't there yeah. a- uh, um, Movie that he did where they were like bank robbers back in the day. Or wasn't it the Romeo and Juliet remake? Oh, he did the Romeo from Romeo and Juliet, yeah. So, so maybe that's where Timothy is going with the career. And that's what you would do if you want to really flex your acting. If you want to be superstar, you want to go do what Leo did. We kind of got to fall in love with Leo. That's what Brad Pitt did. That's what George Clooney did. That's what Denzel did. That's what Denzel did, where you kind of play a version of yourself. It's a little different in every one, but we're going there for you. Yeah. Mm. It's like- uh, Maybe well, he thinks he can't do it with Spider-Man dude also going that same route. Oh, shit. Uh, no, okay, you're Tom. tapping in on something here. This is like upper echelon Hollywood chess play, right? You want a certain career. You also have to recognize there are other people that are going up for the same roles as you. Mm -hmm. And you look at what you can do and you look at what like a guy like Tom Holland can do. So you and your management have to go, we could fight for every role of Tom Holland and probably lose because he's attached to these massive Marvel franchises and he's a global name. Or you could go the artsy route. Tom can't do that. Or maybe he can or can't, we don't know, but that's not what he's gonna be asked to do. You go the artsy route, you become Johnny Depp, and then you be known as the thespian. Mm. Let him be the Marvel superhero. Method or some shit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think that's what they're doing. But that's like a combo where you gotta sit down with a fucking 19 year old kid and be like, what do you want to? What do you want to be seen as? Yeah, mm, like yeah, that's crazy. That's tough to do. Have you heard of the the the, the Matt Damon Ben Affleck thing? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Where like so Matt Damon and Ben Affleck are both brilliant guys. They created Goodwill Hunting. They've created plenty of other movies since. Uh, we look at Ben as the jock mm -hmm. and Matt as like the smart, sophisticated one. Yeah, mm -hmm. misunderstood maybe, but smart, sophisticated. I think Matt did go to Harvard, but also that's who they played. In the Google film mm -hmm. yeah. that created our idea of them. Right. Mm -hmm. So the roles that Ben has gotten offered fit that mold of a guy who's kind of like a tough guy. He might be smart, but he's like a tough guy, yeah. Jock. Green, and then Boston, yeah. yeah. And then I think Matt gets to do talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah. It's exactly the movie. Because awesome. I'm sure people are writing the movies and they're like, you know who'd be perfect for this? Yes. The guy that made me feel that way when I watched Good Will Hunter. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What happens ultimately though? The director, once a director and an actor fall in love, you have. Johnny Depp and Tim Burton, eight movies together. Leo and Martin Scorsese, Scorsese. five movies together. Yeah. So like the, the battle, it stops being a battle with Tom Holland and Chalamet once. Like, I mean, if Chalamet's guy, uh, Denis Villeneuve, who also did uh, Sicario, mm. if he then after Dune wants to do another, th like they'll work together forever. And it's like, yeah. find your muse, keep, you know, keep you know going. What, you know what's interesting though? And I, I'm actually curious about your guys' thoughts on this. Uh, do you like, seeing a new actor that you don't know anything about in a movie? Or do you like seeing a known actor uh, play somebody who you know he isn't? It Ooh. depends if they're archetyped. For, uh, like if, if they're in the role that they were before and then the mental like friction is much less because they're playing similar roles. Like if all of a sudden you put like Joffrey in like a leading man where he's super charming, I'm like- You're like, what's going on? This is too much for my brain. It's that's a that big I'm barrier entry. Yes, that's how I felt about Ben Stiller in Tower Heist. Uh, the movie Tower Heist is supposed to be kind of grounded and serious. 
Yeah. And and Ben Stiller is such a brilliant comedic actor in silly, absurdist films. Yeah. So I couldn't take him being serious in this grounded comedy. Yeah. Like I, every time he was talking and like, I was like, wait, is this sarcastic? Like mm -hmm. w what's going on here? Oh, that's interesting. I, I actually really like movie. when they do yeah. that. Well, you know who's I like to see in the lead flex. though. Well, this is, this is interesting. All right, here's your inside baseball. It was going to be Eddie. That's Eddie's movie. Eddie's supposed to be the lead and the fucking movie theater, the movie, the, the movie studio wouldn't finance it. Of Tower Heist? They, they were like, we don't believe that he can draw. And you know what the movie was going to be called? Whoa. Trump, Trump heist. heist. And then they, <laughs> Trump Hilarious. wanted $10 million for the name and they wouldn't pay it. Wow. Oh, wow. But like when um, Jim Carrey, he did that serious role. Uh, oh, uh, Eternal, Eternal Sponge. Sponge. Yeah. yeah. The spot. Like, I thought that was yeah. amazing. How was also, that? Also, what was the other I, one where I, he, he, he did? Truman Show? Fantastic. That's like that he did period. Great. And I was like surprised. Uh, like, every, I, everything everywhere. That, yeah. It's like. Mm, and I had yeah. never seen him in a serious role. I, <clears> did you ever watch Truman Show? That was his big break from comedy. Oh, yeah. I thought he was good It was funny. But I remember that being a big deal. I remember that being a big deal of, yo, Jim Carrey's breaking away from comedy. He's going to do a drama. And when they used to do it back in the day, Robin Williams would do it, it'd be a big deal. We would be like, oh shit, this comedic actor is doing a drama. But I feel even in that, he was still a little funny. Yeah, he was waving to the like, neighbors yeah, and shit. He was like, silly, but yeah, you yeah. weren't laughing, but he, he was like but that one, comedic. It, eternal, what is it? Eternal Sunshine? Eternal Sunshine. Sunshine. Like, that shit was just serious yeah. drama, like, and he killed that shit. What about shit. Steve Carell and his dramatic roles? He's Ooh, fucking amazing. He's great. He's one that crossed over perfectly. That was yeah, cool. Catcher, super good. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, but I, I think that he plays drama and comedy almost the same. I just think it's situationally different. Mm -hmm. So when he plays, when he plays comedy, he's so funny because he's so serious. Right. He's mm -hmm. not trying to be funny. Like his character in the office is not trying. Not to slapstick. Be funny. It's just. He, I, yeah. I am dead serious about this, and that's why it's hilarious. And I think when he's being dramatic and the situation causes for drama, he gets to be dead serious Good about point. it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like really the context of what's going on. I think that's oftentimes why comedic actors can transition into drama really well because they're not trying. They were trying to be dramatic. Yeah. When they were doing the comedy. Because that's what I was going to say. That's you, a point you bring up about comedic actors in general. They don't know they're being funny. And that's why it's hilarious. And that's We're laughing at them. Yeah. So yeah. Steve Carell, that would apply to all comedic actors doing drama, basically. The ones right? that are good. I yeah. think that they can transition. Now, it, I think that's why oftentimes, I've said this before, why stand-up struggle with comedic acting is because we're trying to say the funny thing when we're yeah. on stage. Yeah. And then when you're acting, you're not trying to be funny. Yeah. And I think we don't know how to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't just say punchlines. That's a good yeah. point. All right, question for you. Yeah. The new movie, Air, came out. No spo Well, the only spoiler, which isn't a spoiler, is Jordan is not in the movie. Great idea. So that was told, that was actually decided because Ben Affleck thought it would be too distracting because here's the argument. Who would play Jordan? I bumped into Matt Damon the other day at the cellar. He came out to watch a show. And... I said that specific thing. I was like, dude, I think it's a great idea that you guys didn't put Jordan in the movie. And his reaction was, yeah, the whole world would collapse. You wouldn't <laughs> believe what's happening yeah. because there's no one that can play Jordan. Yeah. It's like, you know how they've made those like Michael Jackson movies and they just all feel weird? Mm -hmm. Nobody yeah. can be Mike. Yeah. Like, it's almost like you need Mike to be dead for 30 years. Yeah. So Wait, we kind of forget. I'm sorry, what do you mean they didn't put Mike in a movie? Like, they he, only use footage of him in the movie. They did not cast an actor. There's no place. actor playing Michael oh, Jordan. Oh, really? Yeah. I think that's smart. Yeah. Who would, who would you about that. be okay with it? Would it? New actor, audition, no. a la... Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> He's really the only person. Yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I think maybe you CGI. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't or know. Or do the Looney Tunes, Looney Tunes version? Do Space Jam? <laughs> yeah, just think Space Jam, Mike. <laughs> I don't know. I, I it's a weird thing, but I think that, and I haven't seen the movie yet. But my understanding is that like his mom is kind of the star. Yeah, yeah. of the and movie. And that was something that they mentioned. That I mean, Jordan's. I don't think he's a producer on it, but he was Ben Affleck did consult with him, or at least mention to, to get a little, yeah. little head nod. Yeah, and he was the one that says Viola Davis needs to play my mom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. That's cool, dude. Yeah. Comedic actors being serious in that vein. Did you hear what Dana Carvey said this weekend about when he was doing Master of Disguise? No, what he said. This shit, I was dying laughing. So basically, Master of Disguise, he plays all these characters, right? Yeah. He plays infamously the Turtle Guy. Yeah. Am I turtle <laughs> enough for the okay. Turtle Club? I mean, he looks like every one of the turtles that's in the new Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> Bro, it's insane. Doesn't he, Doug? Oh my God. It's yeah. What are they called? Uncanny. The little Koopa. The Koopa uh, or the Goombas? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Goombas. So they filmed this during 9/11. 
They're filming Holy it fuck. as 9 11 is happening. Okay. So all of a sudden, they wrap uh, the scene as the turtle guy, and the director comes out. He's like, guys, there's just been a tragedy in New York City. Oh, God. Uh, the towers just fell. It's a terrorist attack. So we're actually going to do a moment of silence <laughs> for all the lives that were lost on 9 11. He's still in full makeup. Oh. <laughs> they all hold hands in a circle on the set of Turtley Enough, and they fucking do a moment of silence with the lip and the shell on. And he has to be fully serious. <laughs> like, this is terrible what happened in this country. As that guy. <laughs> No. Does he say anything during the silence? <laughs> no, imagine he just, what if he just goes in a shell? He just, he just hides away. Bro, I couldn't believe it that they made him oh my God, in costume so have good. to be serious for a 9 11 trip. I've never seen this. What's this? Uh, Dana Carvey. He's uh, Wayne, Wayne's World. I'm the master. He plays Garth. I haven't seen it. I know of it. Bro, he, he just plays on SNL for years. He just plays oh, all these not, like not zany the characters. Actor, I'm talking what movie? The movie's called uh, Master of Disguise. Yeah, oh, yeah, basically he's got like steal back this thing, and he has to do all these different disguises. He's it's like just an greatest. opportunity for him to flex all his characters. Yeah. yeah, literally. One of the most brilliant things about Beverly Hills Cop, you know the movie, yeah, is that uh, I don't know if they did this by design or they just kind of lucked out, but they created an opportunity for Eddie to flex all of his characters. Mm. So he was this detective and he got to use the character yep. work to extract information from people and get access to certain places yeah. that he would normally be able to get access to, et cetera. And it was like a really smart way to bake a comedian's talents into a role. Now this one, I haven't seen the movie, but maybe someone would be like, okay, this is overkill. Like he's dressing as a turtle or he's yeah. doing this, but, but what they're doing is, hey, he's so brilliant at all these characters, let's find a way to use it. It's, I don't know if anybody had done that before ever, and it's like, you saw it done. Chris Tucker, who I love, who's mm. also in air, but I remember watching, I think Rush Hour, he's just doing the same thing that Eddie's doing, where you like, I gotta get access to this place, so I'm gonna pretend to be this guy. Mm. And I, mm. it was so smart in Beverly Hills Cop they did that. Every time I watch it, I'm like, God damn it, how do they, how do they think of that? I really wonder if they wrote it regular and Eddie was like, hey, why don't I pretend oh, yeah. to be a gay dude here? Why don't I pretend to be, yeah. you know, an African guy here? Like a health inspector or whatever the fuck. Yeah. 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 He like hustles I, his way in everything. Yeah. Or if that was just part of the character. But I think that's, I don't know, like if, if, if you're like an executive, if you're a producer, if you're even a writer, like if you see a comedic talent, you want to use that talent because that's the expectation we all have. Yeah. When we see, uh, was it uh, Chris Farley, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he, you, the one of the cool things about seeing him in movies is like you got to see the reason he's funny in the movie. Yeah. yeah. Like you're tuning in for that. The and physical comedy, you mean? Physical comedy. He's fucking turning flush and red, yeah. and like he's emotionally unstable. Like, show me that shit. Yeah. The last thing I want is to have an expectation of this character and then you not deliver anything on it. Yeah. There was the, uh, what's the, I can't believe I'm fucking forgetting his name. Swingers. Vince uh, Vaughn? Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn was in a season of um, that True HBO Detective. show, True Detective. Yeah. And he just played a different type of character that had no Vince Vaughn in it. Yeah, everybody hated it. I was so let down. Yeah. Mm. And it's not an insult to Vince, but it's like, I, Vince, I love you so much being you. Yeah. I was upset I didn't get to see you. I was tuning in. I feel like that happens with certain people. Vince does it a couple times. He did Swingers. He did Wedding Crashers. He did the one uh, where they had the frat house, old school. Oh, yeah. And then maybe good. one other movie, and then he kind of moves away from being slick, fast-talking, abrasive Vince Vaughn guy. And then he starts playing more muted comedies. Chris Tucker's another one. I brought him up earlier. I fucking worship Chris Tucker as a kid. And then it seems like after Rush Hour, he's like, all right, I'll do Rush Hour too. And then he just kind of stopped doing the Chris Tucker thing. And as fans of this guy, who you're like, yo, I want to see you keep 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 milking that, yo. And then he just stopped. And you're seeing, apparently he's great in air. Ben Stiller's in love with him, which is cool. He was in Silver Linings Playbook. He's good in that. But it's like, yo, I wish I could have seen you do a couple more movies as that guy, as Chris Tucker, as Smokey. Is it possible that there's like a, this is gonna sound wild gay, but just roll on me. Roll with me on this. Uh, is it possible there's like a, like a, there's a real artist in them. Yeah. And that they're going, ugh, I did this. And now you just want me to like mimic this thing I already did. And the artist in me is going, I want to be able to flex myself in different ways yeah. and create new things. And this just feels like I'm replaying the old shit. I do think so, especially with Vince Vaughn. With Chris Tucker, the one thing I couldn't figure out is, you guys have all seen Money Talks, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's one of the best comedic performances I've ever seen. I'm not even bullshitting. Mm -hmm. That scene stealing. Everything like- If he's in it, Unbelievable. You can't take your eyes off. Dude, I you yeah. see him be funny with just his eyes. Like he fucking maximizes everything. And then Rush Hour was like, oh, you're kind of doing Eddie. 
you're Chris Tucker, but you're kind of doing it. But Rush Hour is still really good. Dude. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. But then the next movie he does is Rush Hour 2, which is more of the same. And I was like, I feel like you're not doing artistic stuff right now. Yeah. Brett Ratner was the director of Rush Hour, and apparently they would watch Eddie. I've read this in a magazine 20 years ago, so if I'm wrong, fuck me. But he's like, let's watch Eddie in Beverly Hills Cop, and let's get inspiration from that. Oh, and wow. it's like, yo, let Chris Tucker be Chris Tucker, yo. Did, did you guys see uh, The Fifth Element? Yes. Oh, so amazing. good. Call me. Call me, baby. So, amazing. first of all, Fifth Element is just like a really fun movie. You got to see it. <laughs> I know you haven't. And it's <laughs> it's like it's like iconic Bruce Willis. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's like sci-fi-esque. It's just yeah. kind of fun. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, Mila Jovovich or whatever yeah. her name is is fucking the hottest girl on the planet. So like, it's Lilu. What is it? Lilu. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, it just proves like we don't need women to talk. <laughs> like <laughs> the girl can't even speak English, but you're like, this is the most beautiful yeah, woman. I, I will save you. Dude, like he saves this hot. girl just because she's hot. But Chris Tucker is in it, yeah. and he plays this extravagant. What is he like? A host of a the host of the the music night, yeah, or the music something night like radio, that. like the whole thing. But the confidence it takes for like pretty much one of your first roles, yeah, to do that. To have no fear. He plays, he like dresses in women's clothes. He has yeah. like a woman's hairdo. He's like flamboyant gay. But, but, it, but, and I don't even know if he's gay because I think Cause he's a, going down on a girl in the first scene. Which yeah, I think they he's do like hooking up with a girl. Oh. It's supposed to be the future. Like, it, so yeah. he's just a wild, like out there kind of guy. But the confidence, it's not about the, the homosexuality thing. It's more just like the confidence to, to do that in a place where like, you're not even comfortable. You haven't even been an actor yet, bro. You've yeah. been doing 15 minutes on Def Comedy Jam and you stepped into this role. Most people would freeze. Yeah. yeah. The guy got a crazy head. He's like, hey, what's up stealing the fucking stuff? You gotta explain what it's like being on a set like that. Cause I don't, I think people okay. see a movie and they go, oh yeah, he just did what he does. Yeah, it's you're three, you're 300 people, maybe even more. They got shit to do. They're setting stuff up for fucking hours. You're waiting around doing nothing. You get to film for a few minutes. Yeah. So the majority of the days, they're just setting up. They want to move on to another scene. Everything's running late. Everybody's pushing you past the time. Everybody's upset. Everybody's worried. Everybody's flustered. You like most people are just going. I need to get these lines right to come in there. Yeah. And just be that big and own it. Yeah. Unreal. Having no clue. Like maybe he was a theater kid. I, I don't know. Not that I know. Not of. that I know. But like just to know where you are with the blocking. Yeah. He's just owning the room and everything. And I remember like, I remember after doing acting, thinking about him in that and being like, this guy is either ignorance is bliss or a combination of just like a true savant, like looked at, it, just looked at the whole scenario, understood what it was and just gonna go out there and get it. Or the luckiest person I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Because if you're big and snappy and doing all that shit and it fails a few times, Please believe. Yeah. We got to get him on a pot. Bro, yeah. that, would that would be, be awesome. Yo, first of all, Bum Ass Cities Tour is still going strong. April 20th through 22nd. I'm going to be in Denver, Colorado at Comedy Works Comedy Club, one of the best clubs in the country. I cannot wait to be there. You're not a bum ass city, but after that, May 3rd, East Providence, Rhode Island. May 10th, St. Louis, Missouri. May 11th, Kansas City, Missouri. All those dates and more at akashsing.com. And before you go, guys... I'm getting my own shoe. I might be the first Indian with his own shoe ever. Don't fact check me on that because I probably am wrong, just like I was about Gandhi's wife's age, but don't worry about it. This is from a company called Novella. They hit me up during the pandemic. Uh, they said they really love my comedy and they make shoes for artists that they fuck with. And they only make 2,020 pairs because the, we signed the deal in 2020. And it's a customized shoe that has all kinds of like little details from my life. The insole is even the flagrant background from Miami. Uh, there's a lantern on there for the Village Lantern where Andrew and I came up doing comedy. So if you want to get these shoes, they're called the Lion. That's my last name. Sing means lion. Novella2020.com slash the lion. Cop some pairs before they sell out. Love y'all. Thank you guys so much. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because listen, this summer... You're going to need some tickets, okay? Your boy, back out on tour. We're doing it. Summer. Keeping it sexy. You might be late to get tickets, and then what's going to happen? You're going to have to find a place to get them, and SeatGeek has got your back. And if it ain't me, it's Akash, Taylor Swift. You're going to need to find a way to get these tickets, and SeatGeek has got your back. And not only do they got your back, they're going to let you know if it's a good deal or not. Look at the dots on the seats. You got that green dot? That's a good deal. If it has a red dot, 
They trying to rip your ass off, but sometimes you're going to have to pay for it if you want to see the people you want to see. Simple as that. Point is, if you're getting them tickets on SeatGeek and you use our code FLAGRANT, you're going to get $20 off the tickets. Think about that. Use that code FLAGRANT for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. Make sure your first purchase, you use the promo code FLAGRANT, you're going to get $20 off. Go use it. Make sure you get the app. Now let's get back to the show. All right, guys, you've seen the lights. You already know what time it is. It's back getting crack season. It's spring. Spring upon us. Time to drench them. Time to glaze them. Time to hit parts of the body that you've never hit before. Time to go where hopefully no man has gone before. Time to reach. Okay? Time to stretch. It's Blue Chew. Blue Chew. Got your girl's back. Got your back. Sticky. Might be you sometimes. Might be on your tummy. You don't know what it is. You don't know what type of pullout position you're going to be in. Dick flops up, shoots, hits you on the bottom of your chin. It is what it is. These are casualties of a dice game, fellas. Point is, you can get it for free. Same active ingredient that's inside Viagra, Cialis, but this is the chew. This is the one that we rock with. This is the best on the planet. BlueChew.com. You get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. What a deal. Make sure you use that promo code FLAGRANT when you do it, though. BlueChew.com. Promo code is FLAGRANT. Rick Rubin talks about that, where he's like, you got to either be, like, with rules, like, rules bring you up to mediocrity. Like, rules will make yep. you average if you understand the rules. So you either got to not know the rules and be ignorant, like you're saying, or be such a master of the rules that you know how to break them. Yes. And then that takes hella years. But, like, yeah. if you can be on either end of that, that's where you're, like, making big breakthrough magic. Can I, can I, can I tell you something? Please. On that specifically, this is why I've been acting. I didn't have the confidence to just break these fucking rules mm -hmm. without knowing, like pretending to be ignorant. Like I'd be, I'd be intimidated by certain situations, but I was like, nah, I want to get the most out of this. I want to get this. And in situations where like a director was really supportive of me, I knew I could do whatever I want because I felt that support. But I've also been in situations where I didn't even know if they gave a fuck and I was like, I don't want to ruin this for everybody. And I felt myself melt, right? So I was like, okay, I have to get good enough at this and understand this enough where I know where I could go and where I know I could pull back. Mm -hmm. How I could try my little shit in a safe enough place where if they liked it, they'd be like, yo, do that, yeah, run that yeah. back Pushing again. Pushing just past the rules enough because you already know where they are. Exactly. So I had no clue where the fucking rules were. So I was, and then I was just going and doing my thing. And if it didn't work, I was like, did I just fuck this up for everybody? What, what's the whole situation? Mm -hmm. You know, it, yeah, it's a really good way of looking at it. Know the rules so well, you gotta be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Like I, or like an accountant. Like I know the tax code so well uh, yeah. that we could get freaky with it. Yeah. Or you gotta be completely, you gotta walk in like a rapper, smoking weed, all right, where you want me? Mm -hmm. And then you could say whatever you want, nobody could really be that upset. Yeah. yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah, it's interesting. And Just like, in life in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> like you see people- That's Borat. Boss. Borat pretends he doesn't know bro, the you rules. heard how he just said that? You heard how he just said that. <laughs> Everyone Borat. heard that? That's Borat. Everyone heard that, that's bro? That's Borat. Come on. No, but that's, that is Borat, though. <laughs> he can't even say it right now. I know. He's trying to say it right no. now. No, that is more <laughs> though, because he just pretends he doesn't know the rules of America. And Americans, for the most part, are like, hey, buddy, it's okay. I'll kind of yeah, teach yeah. you the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We let you get away with it. Yeah. yeah. I think he I set did. that kid up to try to suck Dalai Lama's tongue, bro. Yo, I think that was honestly, a, that was a Borat sketch, bro. <laughs> if that was. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Shout out Sasha Baron Cohen. Like, I, I think he sucks, but if he actually did that on purpose, I'd be like, all right, that was a good one. Yeah, you yeah. got one. But yeah, it's like you ever see someone do stand up for like the first couple times and they're doing shit that's like high level and they don't even know it because they don't know the rules. Like they're just like stumbling into like great premises or like a big laugh on mm. accident. And then once they kind of know the rules, it'll go down. Yep. And then you got to do 10 years to un to know the rules just to push past it. Bro, yeah. that's so true. There's a genius in not knowing. Sometimes so I look I look back at some of my oldest premises. Yeah. And I was like these are fire. Yeah. I just didn't know how to make them work. Yeah. yeah. And I think the reason why it dips down is because the level of difficulty to execute that. Think of it like a dive. Mm -hmm. You know there's different levels of difficulty for a dive. Right, you want to do six different flips or whatever like that. That's like the highest level of difficulty. The ideas you have organically walking through society might not really be hacky. They might, but you might just have this crazy wild idea, and then trying to make it funny, you're like, I can't do that. Yeah, shit yeah. Yet. But the idea is pure because it's not derivative. Pure. It's, it's not just, derivative of anything. You know yeah. what I also want to do is take bits that worked in year five redo them, deconstruct them, and be like, the premise is good, but now I'm a better comic. Can I make this joke 
match where I am now comedically. Yeah. And then it's like a good premise that worked one at year five and we got real comedic whatever behind yeah. it. Yeah. But I think you so. see it in all art. I think rappers do that, like musicians, like they'll come out with like some mixtape that's crazy because they don't even understand what they're doing. Mm. And then people tell them, oh well, yeah, you should do this. And they give them all the structure and then it kind of fucks up, like fucks with their head. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I think what happens is when when they experience some success, they feel a pressure to replicate that success. Yeah. And oftentimes in trying to replicate the success, you just replicate the thing that you did that got you successful. And then it's derivative. It's, and then, it's not pure anymore. Yeah, and it's, one, it's derivative, there's impurity to it, but also like there's not that same passion. In yeah. It because you're doing it for success instead of the love. Yeah. So, yeah, and as much as y'all want to trash the Beatles, I, I admire them trying completely new shit, knowing full well it could fail. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's brave, and it, they're like, "Yo, at least we love it." Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the game is figuring out how you can do that new shit at the same level that you did the old shit that people loved. Yeah, knowing full well when people hear it, they're gonna be like, "Yo, this is not it." Mm -hmm. Yeah, or Who's this Japanese bitch, <laughs> right? Because there was probably people that were like, "Nah, they're not what they used to be." Yeah, when they were doing the Indian shit, like the psych rock, they're like, "What happened? They did too much drugs. Like they mm. fell off." Yeah, someone is also. I, I was talking to Miles about this. They broke up when they were like 26. Bruh. That's crazy. I didn't know they that. They stopped making music as a group. Like, I think, like, the, Paul was like 27. 26 was like old back then, though. You yeah, gotta yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. That's you, actually break it down. <laughs> you actually do break it down. That's why. That's like go. a 50 year old, really. Yeah, is that what they it? did when they went to India, bro? That's funny. Did, did Gandhi <laughs> fuck them into greatness? That's he might have, bro. He had that ability. Gandhi that's might have fucked them into greatness, bro. That's amazing. Yo, shout out Gandhi. I don't know enough about the Beatles. How long were they like on top? From what they I were, like, from what I hear, Backstreet Boys. Then they broke up. From what I hear from a white guy, the '60s wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the Beatles. I don't yeah. know if that's a real thing. That's dumb. but like the whole hippie era, the Beatles were the guys that ushered that in. The whole hippie live on the fucking do all the drugs. And I guess his what he's saying is when the Beatles started doing all the psychedelics and making this weird music, mm -hmm. it opened up that whole world for people back when there was three TV channels and a couple records that you listened to and that was it. Mm -hmm. So that's think, their impact. But I, I thought they started as like the cheesy boy band group yes, that they did. all the girls yeah. loved. They did. Yeah. And then they broke up and then did the psychedelic no, route? No. Or, no, they were I don't think up. they broke up. They just changed their sound. Like went to India and like started doing all these crazy new sounds. And they were just the coolest motherfuckers. If you watch the Get Back documentary on Netflix it's or so, on uh, Disney, it's so good. It's like they're just wearing the coolest shit. And people now are like doing derivative shit of their new sounds. Hmm. Like Tame Impala doesn't exist. I mean, I don't know if and, like you give a fuck about Tame Impala, but like they are replicating them. Like all these other musicians that exist now are replicating different eras of the Beatles and doing that differently. Like the fruit of what they created is like untouchable. Gotcha. But when they switched their sound, then people weren't fucking with it or some people, it was like hit or miss. No, it was still huge. It was still huge, but I'm sure anytime there's change, there's going to be rejection and pushback yeah. from uh, some people. The biggest people. change was Yoko. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's all the, the other Asian bitch that split them up. Yeah, but yeah, imagine In Sync starts doing crazy drugs and then starts making like music mm -hmm. and like really fucking experimental sounds, and you're like, yo, this is art. Don't you? Yeah. Know? Oh, Beach Disrespect Boys, that happened like to that. them. Right? <laughs> yeah. But they started as a pop. That girl. was music. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but yes, 100. percent I get yeah. what you say. Yeah. Wow, yeah, okay. it's it. it yeah, it's wild to have that type of pressure. Also, to be able to reject all the voices that are compelling you to create the same thing that was so successful because they rely on you economically. Yeah. Every uh, one of the executives and producers, like, for example, like some of those producers that know how to produce regular hokey boy band shit, they don't know how to do that Indian shit. Yeah. So they might be out of a job. Yeah. So they're saying, are we sure we want to go in this direction? Yeah. You got everybody saying, don't go in this direction. Yeah. That's unbelievable. And that's where they lock themselves in a room. Yes. And they, they shut out everything. They don't have the internet. They can't see all the critics like every single yeah. day. How different would it be if you get constant tweets we have negativity. Yeah, it sucks. It like disrupts the creative process. Like yeah. I was talking to uh, the dude, he was the editor in chief of Complex and he was talking about like the role of the critic back in the day. Mm. And it's like back in the day, there was such a pressure when you're buying an album. You know what I mean? Like you would buy a CD, you would spend like the only money you have when you're 15 years old, go to the store, buy a CD. And like every time you would skip, it would fuck up your battery life on your fucking Walkman. So like it, there was a ton of pressure for like buying shit and you had an obligation to the audience to be like, hey, this is the shit you should put your money on and spend time with. And this is the stuff you should reject. But now that everything's streaming, like the role of the critic is kind of like phased out a little. Yeah, because uh. it, I feel that way with film for sure. 
where like the critic's job was to get you to hire a babysitter. Yeah. It was to get you to put on clothing and leave your home. Mm -hmm. We don't really need a critic for a streaming show mm -hmm. because the barrier to entry is so low. I yeah. just press play in my underwear. Mm -hmm. Like you told me Blackbird was great. Yeah. I watched Blackbird. Yeah. It was great. But if it wasn't great. If it wasn't great, I'd watch an episode and be like, yo, I didn't like it that much. Yeah. And I'd probably make fun of you. Yeah. But I wouldn't. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't no loss, yeah. exactly. But if you go to the movies, you put the whole shit on and do everything. If you went, you go to Tower Records, you buy the fucking CD. Takes you fifteen minutes to unwrap that bitch. Remember yeah, they used to wrap it in the best yeah. plastic ever. Yeah. I remember buying the CD case out of that. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that shit never broke yeah. once. Just an old Boys to Men fucking album. Yeah. Like, just wrap that shit on your dick. Jesus. So, <laughs> so it's like, and then it sucks. You're like, oh hell no. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, yeah. Yeah, you don't have the right to be that angry when you see something shitty on a Netflix. It's You're right like, there. it's all free. Yeah. It's yeah. free. It's, it Change feels free. It's right there. You skip it, and then there's something else. Yeah. Hmm. So he was saying, like, the, the role is now turn, like, turned to, like, curation. So, like, just curate the stuff that you think is fire and then put people onto that. Yo. And that's how you organize your audience, which is implicit criticism, but it's not direct. It's not like, this is good, this is bad. It's like, hey, here's all the fire shit. And honestly, what a better life. Oh, yeah. Like imagine being a critic where like you feel like you're in some position to like judge the art. Yeah. Especially with an art like comedy where it's like we can hear the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't need you. Yeah. Like, are they laughing? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's it. That's the answer. It's right. There's one answer that's good. It's laughter and they're laughing. Right. So but I love this idea of curation. Like. Even, I, mean, I tell my girl, I'm like, people really like it when you're saying these restaurants that are out there because mm -hmm. they trust your taste yeah. Yeah. and it simplifies their life in a way. But she's not saying this place sucks. Exactly. She's just saying, here are the five best. You know what and that is? And then those places go to, those places will hit you up and be like, hey, that really meant a lot. Yeah. That you, like, we worked so hard on this place and you shared it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Just like we do. Like, when somebody shares our stuff, it's like, yo, thank you. Like, we fucking try hard on this. And for you to acknowledge that, it feels good. That's what Noah was saying. He was like, there's, back in the day, there was so much pressure that you know someone poured their life into this. And they got a producer. Like, think about how hard it was to make a rap album mm. in the fucking early 2000s. Mm. Like, there was a lot of time and a lot of people put energy into it for you to be like, yeah, this shit sucks. But you have an obligation to the audience because you know there's one kid with one $10 bill and he's going to buy one album. Mm. So you had to kind of parse it to where you were doing it justice to them. Well, and that's now the, it's changed. The, the power of the really. DJ. The DJ is the, cu the curator. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. But it is interesting. Like kind of, he, he was also saying there's like good criticism and bad criticism. Like just saying something is trash is bad criticism. Mm. Like there's no thought put into it. But if you're really like deconstructing what someone's doing, being like, this parts were, these, these parts were amazing, these parts were lacking, Production on this wasn't that good. The beats weren't great, but the lyrics were good. He's like, that's the criticism that artists should consider. I feel like critics went through a stage of like they mattered and their voices really actually swayed people's opinion mm -hmm. or like directed them what to do or say or watch. Mm. And then they started to matter a little less. So then you would just have the critics that just will shit on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for attention. Just, just for the attention. They're just trying to get yeah. clicks, bro. And, and like uh, now, negativity is the now, easiest like, way to get it. Don't even matter. Like even for this uh, Mario movie, the What's it called? The Rotten Tomato meter? Yeah, the Rotten Tomato yeah. is like 50%. How are they going to compete but, with millions of people or hundreds of thousands? The people vote is 98%. So yeah. Rotten, but, and then, and then it becomes the highest grossing cartoon movie in history for mm -hmm. their first weekend. Yeah, opening mm -hmm. weekend, yeah. So it's like, yeah, obviously you're going to trust the people. Mm -hmm. Because think about it. It's like, I don't know. I don't know how you often. You can almost, it seems like Rotten Tomatoes critics, you just go across whatever the political, like if it's a left-leaning film, it's going to have a high critic score. Yeah. It just seems we we talked about certain I don't comedy know if specials it's where political. it's like I think they at this point no one really cares about Rotten Tomato so it's like hey let's do something that's so against everybody else so everybody comes and clicks on our site yeah because like, are you going yeah. to check Rotten Tomatoes before you well go it just see aggregates a movie? what critics say right so it's just like critics fifty percent said it's good fifty percent said it was bad yeah but it's like same way how TikTok all those views aren't real views. Mm -hmm. I think it's just like, yeah, let's just make the critic score be huh. this. Okay, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I don't know. Because that, that like, it would make you go, I was like, why is such a discrepancy between these two shit? But isn't it nice that and we trust the people? About. Yeah. Now we do. Back in the day, we used to be like, oh, the people are Oh, so I guess dumb. it's trash. Because yeah. you couldn't yeah. aggregate the people. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess now with, with the Rotten Tomatoes, like, I trust the people score over oh, yeah, every way. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's almost to the point where if the... If the critics give it 99, I'm skeptical. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, you about to trick me yeah, to watch nah. some corny ass fucking movie they with got, an agenda. They got yeah. bought out. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And that's on the critics. Yeah. If you just 
if you just bolster shit for political reasons and then you trash shit because it's going to get you clicks, you eventually are going to lose the faith of the audience. Yes, yeah. they have. And opinion. they fucking did. All right, so Thumbs let's guess, up, guess the uh, Mario uh, discrepancy. Rotten Tomatoes score. He said 50 and 98. Yeah. yeah. 57 and 96. Yeah. There's no way he, that He that, actually yeah. said the scores earlier. I, 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 yeah, he just you know, yeah, disappeared. I just had to acknowledge. So, Thank you. I'm not half black. Yeah, well, he I said, he said actually, by the way. Yeah. Uh, he said Mario. I think he thought it was a different yeah. movie. Yeah, he, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, also yeah. acknowledge I was right about the ages of uh, Gandhi's kids. Damn, or when boy, he had I kids. So. Oh, really? That's mad long ago, bro. I don't even bring that shit up. I just need to acknowledge it, though. He's older than him? She's older than She's him. older, but they didn't. They Listen, you've 15, been trying so. to put kids on Why Gandhi. Why you put 11 on Gandhi, time, bro? That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Was Al, the, that's Al the most he, disrespectful thing no, you've ever okay. done. He got as married an idiot, at 15. No. no, you said 13. Yeah, yeah I said 13 and she, she was 11. 14. Hold on, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. He what? was 13, she was 14. And then wow. when did they have kids? How you put 11 on that, man? Wow, you disrespect for that. Son. Disrespect, bro. And then was trying to Shoot, argue where you too, at, bro. bro. What, who's <laughs> <son>? <laughs> when did they have kids? Son, son can you yeah. just hire a real Indian to teach you shit? <laughs> That's what she was doing, bro. <laughs> God damn, bro. Just son. hire a motherfucker. They cheat. Indian wouldn't even fact check me on that because it'd been like, just let it slide. Let it slide. They don't care. What was the round tomato on her, though? Do you know? Fresh. Fresh. Yeah. <laughs> Certified fresh. Damn, son. That's crazy. All this time, I thought he was fucking kids because you put that. Wow. You put that thing You in. really put that. Yo, no, 11 is with, crazy. He yeah. slept with the 13-year-olds and didn't have sex with them, which you refuse to believe. Nice. Hater. And then his wife, I guess, was 14. But 15, that's a MILF, bro. That's like, you know what I mean? Back in the 14 day. and 13. What's even the difference? My point still stands. <laughs> I was wrong. I eat that. But the logic stands. Nah. I don't know, B. How'd you feel first about that argument? It was 18, 19. His first kid was so that. You don't know shit about Gandhi, <laughs> bro. I got <laughs> all them facts wrong, bro. I got all we got to do a post game with this. We got to do a post game, bro. So you don't know shit wrong. about don't shit, bro. <laughs> I got all Son, them facts wrong, This is dog. bad, bro. Yeah. This is bad, bro. When Andrew yeah, was grilling yeah, yeah, you, how'd you feel, I mean, this is silly. No, no, no. Listen, flagrant army. If we got an Indian in India, and I mean like a real ass Indian that like learned all this stuff about your country. I mean this sincerely. Got the steak. No, no, no. You need a DM. Why are you bringing a steak, yo? <laughs> DM Akash, and then you need to just be his chai information. What? No. What is information it? Wallet. Information, information wallet. Yeah, you need to be his yeah. information wallet. I will forget everything you tell me. No, no. Two stop weeks. with that excuse. That's no. an excuse. Yeah. You are. I read his book. I read his autobiography. Still got the shit wrong. You didn't read that. I did. You didn't read it. I read a book, of autobiography, and then a biography. God, still fucked it up. No, you didn't. Why would you I need, make you that? Need a, you need an earpiece, bro. You gotta do them practical jokers, Indian style. You just, just you feeding you info throughout the whole thing. I that I could use. No, you we we need to just have a conversation. Y'all need to have a conversation <laughs> once a week and just teach them some Indian shit. What'd you learn growing up? <laughs> See, I learned I forgot, yo. <laughs> What'd you learn growing up, bro? Son, we just do your school and then we're better at it. Mm. But that's what we do. We do, do white school, school and yeah, then he we're learned spelling. I don't think spelling. you know more about American shit than me. I'm not good at history. Who's good at history? White people. That's all y'all are good at. Yeah, yeah. yeah really Glory are. days. Because that's, that's when we're popping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I like the most fuckers that peaked history. in high school. Keep talking about it. Son, you are really defensive right now. I'm of trying to help I'm you learn some shit <laughs> about your country. I'm trying to climb out country. this hole. Listen, you can't you challenge this whole this identity. Hole. And you're Listen, like, why are you I'm not challenging this identity. You put... 11 year old yeah. on Gandhi's dick. That's yeah. crazy. That you put a 13 year old yeah. on him. Who did? You did. No, I never said nothing. Mm. I never said nothing. I was going off what you said. No. I never said nothing. You said he fucked 13 year olds, I'm pretty sure. I never said that. I said he fucked 11 after you said 11. Yeah. But I never said and a single. That was his wife. That's based off the information that you told <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. said he had a yeah. kid at 13. Yeah. You no, I said 18. he got married at 13. No, you I said, said he got no, married. No, no, and then no, you no. said you, he I said he had a kid at 15. 14. I think I said 15. I think you said 13. 16. Rub back 15. the tape. Whatever, whatever. The tape. The point is, 18 my point is, my point is, we need a we need an information walla, and we need you to help our boy Akash become the greatest Indian intellectual in this. history. I'm into And this. I promise you, he will remember everything that you tell him. Yes. I won't, but I let's no, go for it. No, he will. He's just never learned it initially. <laughs> Now he's going to learn it. He's going to absorb it because it's in his yes. blood. It's in his skin. It's in his brain. Let's it's go. in every fucking part of his body. Yes. And I like we're going to create the greatest fucking Indian yes. in history. Dr. Umar uh, of Indians. That's it. Yes. You're going to be Indian Dr. Umar. Mm -hmm. Do some of that I'm red that beard dye shit. Yo, nah. get the you red need to beard dye though. that fucking beard with the henna. Yep. You need to get and the get henna beard. Going. I'll do that. I mean that shit. I'll do that. Honestly. Now that I'll you, do. Son. I'm going to forget. 
But we're gonna no, do no, it. No, 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 don't, don't put that out there. Okay. Don't put that out yeah. there. I'm telling you, do not put that out there. All right, fair enough. You remember. I'll remember. You thoughtful ass motherfucker. You don't forget nobody's birthdays. <laughs> mm-hmm. You don't forget nobody's important events. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know either one of their birthdays. But right you now. would find out before. Yep. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and you will be there. And uh, yo, well, I I'm, find I'm out before. I'm trying to build you up right now. I appreciate but stop that. disagreeing with me. I appreciate Which that. Side am I supposed to be so, on? Yeah. I appreciate that. I find out before. I forget. Yeah, you acting like a real girl right now. So yeah. Like, right. Put a red dot on his motherfucking forehead. Shub <laughs> 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 is about to put a red dot on his forehead. Right now. <laughs> Akash. 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 Yeah. Akash. Yeah. You gonna be the greatest, bro. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna be right. dreaming. You got You're gonna be the greatest. You got that. But we need an information walla. Yeah, I would love that. Indians, DM me. I'm going to pick the right one. DM me. Arrange it. I'm going to arrange it. Yeah. But also DM him, but also DM me. DM all of us. We want the greatest ah. Indian mind in all of India. I don't want no American motherfucker. I, I want to learn the Indian shit, the propaganda y'all learn, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to do. <laughs> uh, I mean that. So seriously. Right, I'm with it. Let's outsource right. it. Let's outsource it. I love it. You gonna be Indian, my boy. All right, let's Indian. go. Indian. Let's go. Riding the subway on top. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you gonna be Indian. Okay? Right. I'm not playing. All right. Indian. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm with it. Let's All go. Right. Let's go. How are, the, how are the peptides doing, by the way? Nothing, bro. It's not doing anything mentally? No, I feel nothing. Fuck. So he's not it selling takes this a while, shit though, at right? all, bro. I heard it takes a while. I heard it takes a few months. I'm waiting for him to. I gotta the... see results. Yeah, first. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, Son, me too. Damn like... near made Gandhi a rapist one week. Come on, dude. <laughs> Come on, bro. I don't know if I can do this. Like... I'll be out here on, after after one month of peptides saying Braveheart used to <laughs> fuck English out, bitches. Get it out, <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> All right, man. We got this. Okay. I'm what? with it. I love this plan. I believe in you. Have you seen this? This has been popping up. This is ab implants for men. Yo, apparently this is a one point three billion dollar industry. No, no, one point three million men went in for cosmetic surgery. Mm-hmm. Now, I'd like to know what percentage of that is Botox, because I think that that's as we predicted, become incredibly popular yeah. with oh, men. Botox, LA, bro. Botox, bro. Yeah, everybody's one hundred percent. L. A. and uh, uh, Soho, Nolita. New York. Uh, yeah, yeah, why, is that, why is that so specific, dude? Really <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Like you really narrowed down. Wait, did I narrow it down up, to kind of like here? Yeah. Am I? Well, this shit is gone. But for a minute, when I was looking bro, good, that I was hat is too hey, strong, bro. Yo, <laughs> bro, you look like you, you got, got a hair star transplant going down below <laughs> yeah. the yeah. fade. God, you got a hair transplant. Right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Anyway, I'd like to know what that is. Yo, it's hard being Waluigi out here, man. It's hard, bro. Yo, how the hell did they make a Mexican? Um, look good. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is lower than Mexicans the pants. aren't built to look good in a body like that. Yeah, that Mexicans, kinda... y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. You're not built with abs. So what? What's the procedure? So they lipo, obviously, and then are they putting something in? Yeah, I think they're yeah. re-injecting fat, like fat transfer, like BBL. No I way. I think so. That yeah. seems crazy. I though. also think they have prosthetic too. Yeah, but they accused uh, Liver King of doing that. Yeah, and uh, his I think is. Yeah, I think his I is mean, just they're natural actual as implants. Yeah, okay. some are actual implants, and I think what they can also do is like uh, they tighten yeah. on like uh, to create contouring. Yeah, yeah, Dove, there's still hope, mm-hmm. bro. But a lot of dudes are on this, and you put them in some true jeans. Do, do we go back into a competition, by the way? Nah, just yo, to, we we so might need to. But this is something that I'm really upset about because what Dove love hand? No, no, no. Like dudes doing this cosmetic shit. The great thing about being a dude was. Always, that yeah. we just needed to get successful. Yeah, you just despite, be rich. Yeah, that we could, we could, we could be fucking fat. We could be ugly. We could be short. This we could is, be anything. This is dudes doing it for dudes. Hold on I one second. So. Hold on one second. I want to hear that point. Let me get out my point that I feel okay. like is shitty now. Okay. <laughs> um, but one of the great things was that, that we had access out of the cards that God dealt us. Yeah. So God dealt us certain cards, but we had access out. And that was the great thing because women don't, mm-hmm. right? Like they ugly, they ugly, right? Now I know that we could get them on that HRT and we can make them more beautiful. Beep. We got to try that shit. Mm-hmm. But you bring up a very interesting point, Alex. Yeah. Which is, this is men trying to impress other men. Please elaborate. So most women say they're not into all the big muscles, 
cuts, all that shit. Most women. I have a theory on that really quickly. Like, I've heard women say, like, they're into dad bots. Well, I think it's a insecurity complex. I think if the guy mm. is better in better shape than them. Oh, really? They feel insecure a little bit. And I don't think that they need us to be shredded mm. in order to be turned on. So when we are and they're not, and it's much harder for them to be in shape than us. Like, they, mm. they naturally store fat because they have to have children with it. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it makes them a little bit insecure. Anyway, go on. Interesting. Oh, no, because I just remember, like, when Zac Efron was all, like, roided up and shit like that, and, like, women were, like, they're not into that. I think that far that way, like, I saw, like, a man on the street video type of yeah. thing, and it was, like, four bodies, like, super shreddy bodybuilder, and then, like, a very fit guy, then dad bod, and then a really out of shape person. Yeah. yeah. Everyone picked the first to be just a really in shape Dude, they don't want us and they fat, were but they want us. Out. Yeah. yeah, a lot yeah. of girls were like, they could not handle all of that hyper. Yeah, yeah I think if, as long as your body. belly's not protruding, but I don't think you need fucking six pack. Especially that don't look real. Who's that? The, whatever, a, a rapper that went viral. That's Bam Man Kevo, right? Yeah, he was just honest about it, and then people. <laughs> what the fuck? What? <laughs> I just, I don't know how you know this guy, but it must yeah, have popped. Can I be honest? It must have popped on Grant. Yeah. So. Like, Do you know how I know? <laughs> One, because he was talking that shit. He was like, "Oh, y'all made fun of me for getting my body done, but now 1.3 million men have just admitted that they went out and did it." So he basically uh, got his get back. Also, his titties are mad recognizable. <laughs> <laughs> he, got, he got a recognizable <laughs> chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, the You'll chest never, is fake too. I think the whole I thing think the is whole done. Thing is, yeah. <laughs> but it looks good though. <laughs> That's great. It looks good. Yeah, though. you got to talk under I'm the I'm built like that. You built like that a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. You are built like that. My chest ain't look that big. Did you no, get some out of chest? Yeah, cuz I fucking work out, but no, not like Did that. you get f fucking transfer? Those don't do it. Did you? Stop. Did no, you, you transfer from your legs, maybe? Did you? <laughs> yeah. I saying, need to bro. inject oh, the other way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Fuck. That's what I need to do. Can you get someone else's fat putting you? What's the rule on that? Like, could you do BBL? That was a joke I had about the uh, Kardashians that yeah. they were using Rob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. He was a source for all their titties yeah. and shit. I don't, I don't know. Bro. My concern with this is that we're going to do what women have done, and uh, women have absolutely destroyed themselves, is they've created an unrealistic standard for themselves. Yeah. They have the fake eyelashes. They're wearing fucking heels all the time. They're wearing spanks to keep their stomach in. They're doing all these things. Now, I understand that being good-looking is more valuable for them in the marketplace. It's mm -hmm. a, The currency is more valuable than us being good-looking, sure. But my fear is if we are expected to look like this, now we're going to put ourselves in the same situation they do where they're spending an hour to get fucking ready. They're going to doctor's appointments all the fucking time. Yeah. The great thing about being a dude is we get to focus on our job, have a dad bod. As long as we get to, you know, some good money coming in and we can provide, mm. we're valued. Do you think this is part of, like, the dating app culture? That, like, where if it's just a meat uh, market? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, like, before you could be, like, charming. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Don't, don't say, do you think. Stand on that brilliant thing that you just said. This is the symptom. <laughs> Of dating app culture. Yes. Yeah. Wait, That's what wait, this wait, is. wait, why, why? Because dating apps is just a meat market. It's right? a complete As Dub always meat says, market. So for no reason specifically. He just always happens to bring that up. But back in the day, it used to be charming. You could just he go just up to a girl. You ugly. No, you just brought it up. You just have you know, I go on dates where girls are like, oh, nah, yeah, nah, I'll nah, sit nah. with these <laughs> terrible <laughs> dates with these flexing. fucking terrible great like, looking guys. You're more charming than you are good looking. I mean, but I'm really, <laughs> really charming but, and also good What have looking. I said about you? What have I said? That's the perfect compliment. What, what have it I sounded always, weird. No, no, no. What have I said? What have I always said about Doug? What have I always said about Doug? I said, There's I said a different Doug way to say is that same thing. the most charismatic, charming, his social IQ is the highest that exists mm. on the planet. Yeah. Have I always said that? 10. Yeah. Thanks, 11, Josh. 12. Yeah, yeah. You so, are more charming than you are good looking. Fair, yeah. take it. What's what's his NBA 2K score? Like he's 100% out of 100 for charming. And then where is he at percentage wise? Fuck you up right Where is he at percentage wise for like looks? I think he's 150 out of 100 in charming. Nice. And I think when you average it with his looks, he's about an 85. <laughs> so I think that. I think, 85 overall. Get me in the eights. I'm okay. Get me in the eights. I'm okay with this. Where, where, are where are you? Where are you? Listen, 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 listen. I'm like, I'm like a nine out of ten looks, and then personality brings me back to like a five out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> like if I That's talk fine. to a girl, then yeah, we yeah. definitely coming back down yeah, to yeah. a five. <laughs> we really gonna let him go nine out of ten looks right now? Well, Nobody's gonna give me any push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you in personality. So, yeah. He's <laughs> yeah. 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 like, no, you were being. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were nailing on the second part. Serious? Come on, Al. Wait, you're an asshole. <laughs> no, no, come on, man. I tell these girls to, you know, tell me about their dreams and shit. 
Nice, nice, <laughs> you know? dude. You okay, say like that. What are your dreams and shit? <laughs> no, I will honestly because I don't know how to do the whatever talk. So I need to know what you want to do. <laughs> yeah, small <laughs> talk. So I need to be like, what do you want? Like I'm very quick how in the conversation. The what do you want to do? Hey, we just sat down. Hey, great to meet I you. I got a joke. You need to get out. No, go, go. Get your joke out. <laughs> Shorty, you was here. Your your pants <laughs> suck. I hate your pants. Your haircut's ugly. It's not even a joke. It was just so funny when you were trying to be all sentimental of like, ah, how you knew this was my wife. It was like first time I actually wanted to listen to someone. <laughs> that, was, so that was so That's funny. Facts, bro. That's facts, you, you really bro. meant it. No, I meant yeah. that shit, bro. I meant that shit. I would do it before I didn't want to. I know. That's I know. That's, it was bro. It was I know, so. I know. It was rough, bro. Y'all lucked up. Y'all got out the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't know. They don't yeah, know. I didn't know I hated Imagine having hundreds of women. <laughs> you didn't want to hear what they Yo. <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. 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 <laughs> Actually, maybe some of them I like listen to. But how do you not know? They not here. They not here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that sounds bad. I, like, Joking. This is jokes. Comedy pod. <laughs> <laughs> right? But there's some that I just didn't like that. But I, I was put, always nice and kind. Yeah, what I your dreams listen. and shit, though? I knew some didn't want to listen to me. Yo, ain't that crazy? They when... just wanted to get dick down. Yo, <laughs> Stop Stop it. It. yo, straight up. Stop they done. just, yo, I'm telling you, there are women that just tolerated so me because they for wanted 30 to get seconds dick down. Now you're, sound, now you're sounding like a girl. You're like, she didn't want to care about my dreams. She did, bro. <laughs> Treat me like happens. a piece of meat. These bro. girls, they got, they got a uh, sexual appetite. This crazy son. <laughs> Y'all don't know, bro. Y'all don't know they about don't these know. single girls in New York. So you're, tell her about your dream. Market, you're telling her about your dreams. <laughs> I, she I was trying to tell this girl about some shit that happened at a show once, and she just started making out with me in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> I bombed twice. I bombed at the show, and I bombed trying to tell a story about the show. Now my confidence is low. I can't dick this girl down. Yeah, but she's trying to suck your tongue. She's, she's trying, trying to treat you like it. the Dalai Lama. And we're back. Okay. So, Akash. You brought up, yeah. you said women who are into feet. Yeah, that's disgusting. That's if disgusting. you're not a lesbian. All right, can I just throw out an idea? Okay. All right? <laughs> I'm into feet. Yes. You into feet? Yes. Okay. People have been critical of me for being into feet. They think I'm a weirdo. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if it wasn't for people like me, we would all be walking on our knuckles still. <laughs> you know what I mean? And millions of years ago, there was a monkey born with feet. And someone like me was like, that's fire. Y'all fucking hands monkeys. I'm fucking this foot monkey, bitch. And then we kept making more monkeys with feet. And that's why we here. This. If it's this. not for me, this. you go have hands on your feet. You go have hands on your feet. You wouldn't, because you're a real one. They need to show. Now that everybody got feet, they wouldn't be like, oh, it's weird that you're still into feet. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. You gotta move on, though. You're talking about millions nah. of years ago, bro. Nah, shorties that are into feet, thank you for being part of that. No, you're still in Jurassic thank period, you. bro. You're in Jurassic thank period. You, you in gotta, Jurassic. No, you gotta come you to the future. You're a Triceratops. You gotta Look come to the future, bro. Forehead. You gotta come to the future, dog. No, fuck you. You're still in evolution fuck phase. Everybody who talks shit, you're welcome. We evolved <laughs> you. Y'all would be eating your fucking toenails. Well, I do that still. But still <laughs> yeah. Listen, you got remnants oh, of the past. Did you see the bar? Barbie trailer? Mm. Mm. Well done. Yo, you saw the feet in the Barbie yeah, trailer? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I need to yeah, look yeah, at that yeah, third yeah. toe to second toe ratio. I, that look, third toe might be a little longer than that second toe. It's Arch not, is great. You Oof. feet Arch people is great. are so weird. Nah, we bro. not weird, bro. We you, made us humans. Yeah. <laughs> you humans the only so animal weird. with feet. <laughs> a whole Hold on, there we go. trailer and y'all talking about the feet. Hold on now. Hold on now. Let's look at There you go. I mean, <laughs> still breaking down. You can see the arch right there. Look at the Ooh, arch. Well oh, done. guys, stop. Great pause. Okay, I can. No. Is this okay. Ryan Gosling? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. So, here's the reason. Okay, can, let, let me just do a little. Oh the, my the, God. Length, the length. I'm Kenny. I'm like Kenny. The length? Is it the length? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm Kenny. All right, ready? So. This is crazy we're doing this right now. Yo, all, Dude, you're all, crazy. All due respect. This is Barbie. This is a All character. due respect, what's that toe doing right it, there? It, it That's does what seem, I'm trying it to does seem out. a bit long. This one, I think, is coming longer than that one. But the nails and everything. You know who else got that? It's Kourtney Kardashian. Third toe longest. <laughs> See, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to say something that nobody has said right there. I think that's a foot double. 
I think it's a. I think that's a foot double. I think that's a foot double. I'll, I'll say it. Mm -hmm. But they're gonna get a foot double and then not pick a good foot. Some they don't people, know feet, they man. Might not people, know feet. You be shocked how much people don't know feet. You would be. <laughs> so, you be shocked. Yo, you so. could put a human hand there. You probably fuck it. I know Mark would. Y'all don't care. <laughs> we're evolved, bro. We're, we're in the future. No, yeah, yeah. y'all are in, yeah, the in the past. past. You're, in the, you're past. in the past. You're in the past. Now, that person. argument, the logic, foolproof. Flawless. He's talking about fucking fish with feet or some shit. He's all the way in the Jurassic period. You're not even in the future. That's another thing. I like when pussy smell like fish. No, don't oh. do that. No, <laughs> no. Where did we evolve from? <laughs> where did we evolve from? Bro, you gotta move on. Yo, where did we evolve from? The ocean? The ocean! <laughs> that pussy was fishy back in the day, bro. It was mostly that pussy fish. Had scales. It was just fish, it really. It was fish. <laughs> did we evolve from the ocean? Say again? Did we evolve from the ocean? We started in the ocean. Mm hmm. Started from the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep the bottom no, we bro. did. We moved up. We did. No, we started up. I mean, according to these, uh, you know, atheist um, biologists. Yeah. I, I don't you, know shit. I thought you Christian now, son. Huh? I thought you Christian now. Yeah. I am Christian. I watch my Sunday service. Shout mm -hmm. out to Renaissance. Nice. That is crazy, though. Back in the day, like, everyone was animals, and then it just went from bestiality to not that. Like, there was one guy that was still doing bestiality, and they're like, yo, we're off that. We're just doing homo sapien love. Uh, yo, is he making my argument to me? <laughs> but like, I'm saying is he it, actually doing Back it? in the day. Is he actually doing I'm saying it? that's old. Did he actually he just fucking make the exact argument? No, you're on still like, oh, bestiality is kind of cool. That's basically what you said. This guy's a goofy, bro. That's what you said, bro. <laughs> this guy's a really goofy, did say bro. the exact yeah, same thing. Either. I didn't see it at first. I'm saying no, it's yeah, old. He just tried to flip it. I'm saying it's this old. This is what Christians do. <laughs> you have the Jewish version, and they're like, oh, no, this is really what Make happened. it better. Exactly, exactly no, bro. No, yes. no, no, yes. no. I'm with the Jews now. No, I'm Jewish, uh -uh. bro. Can we wiki feed Marvel Robbie, though? Yeah. Oh, are we going to feed checker? Yeah, I think we should I think we need a feature. I think we should feature. Yeah. I think we need a feature. We know that third toe is is on some Gumby shit, so we need a foot checker. Let's see. Let's see. This website. Bro. You're not going to get it. Oh, oh. Oh. Hold on. Hold on now. Oh, let me extend, though. <laughs> Enhance. No, no, no. I, That's can the I, wrong part, bro. Go can down. I say one thing real quick? Yeah. I know why they did that thing. I thought that they did that scene just for the foot fetish people, like myself, mm -hmm. which is not a foot fetish, just for the humans that created evolution, like myself. <laughs> Uh, that's what I thought, okay? That's how Barbie stands, right? That's it, my boy, yeah. it Wait, makes oh, sense. You didn't get that initially. <laughs> so how's, in how's I supposed to get that when I'm double-barreled on the shotgun? He's a caveman, yeah. bro. double-barreled on the shotgun. He's a caveman. You know what I mean? How am I supposed Yo, to ask? Y'all really do like feet. Yeah. What? That's crazy. You that's like not... doll. <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you what thinking do? about the doll? <laughs> So I, that's a foot double, I, bro. I, 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 I think she's second to longest. Right that's a foot double, bro. I think we got a foot double. We got it. We got it. We caught him out. We caught him. Caught him red-handed. Caught him red-handed. She don't got no beach picks? I think she's elusive, bro. She's <laughs> oh. like a white whale. This is Moby Dick, dude. We're just we're All right. Yo, she don't never take pics on the beach? This nope. bitch don't like to swim? It's tough, because the second and third there seem like same length. So is that a She's good She's a great toe? foot. She's a great foot. She's We're a looking great at foot. What's, what's your take on a little foot tattoo? Usually it's for fat girls, because that's the only <laughs> skin that doesn't stretch on their whole bodies. <laughs> but that one's small and tasteful. <laughs> I don't like a foot tattoo. Also, also there's more turnover on the uh, epidermis on your foot, mm. so it gets blurry. It's not good. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah. Foot tattoos, what, bad. What is that? I, something back in the day. It's an anchor. Oh. How do you know that? Uh, because I have eyeballs. No, you can't really see it. <laughs> I now. zoomed in. It's an anchor. Yeah, it's a, I, you just can't see. She's Australian. C. Come on, Dub. Don't do that. No. <laughs> Damn, the dog. C. Yo, it's a foot double. I think it's a foot double. It's a guaranteed foot double. It's one hundred percent a foot. But double. why would she foot double to a worse foot? Because she they don't just don't want to be. She, worse. she got enough be, pictures of her exactly. feet out there. I don't care if it's a better foot or a worse foot. I don't need to be objectified further. She don't want to be bothered. She bro. don't want to be objectified. She don't want to, it's like, it's, it's, she don't want to be funny. bothered. It's like you don't need me for this part of the shoot. <laughs> I'm good. But if she was a purist, she would do it. Yeah. She'd yeah, be she, like, yo, she for understood free. what we understand. So that third toe. That's wild. That third toe is erect. <laughs> <laughs> that third toe is stiffened. You know, in the out. cartoon when they hammer their thumb and, and it goes crazy. That's yeah, the third yeah, toe. Yeah. But still a beautiful foot. Like I, you know, I want to objectify you positively. So, yeah, hilarious. But I am a truest about this this shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're welcome. You think that's a ballerina or like someone's on a sloped green screen? Nope. How they Not do even it? close. Not even close. Not a ballerina at all. 
Not even close. I mean, if, if we really want to get into this, we can get into it. I come from a dancing family. Yeah. <laughs> like, if we really want to get into this, I can get into it. Get this. into it. A ballerina would never have a foot that beautiful. A ballerina's foot is absolutely destroyed from years of being on point. Mm. Never would be a ballerina. I'm sorry. Didn't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Give me that one right there. Nope, you're wrong. Wait, which one? No, no back to the, the, the theater. She was on. Movie theater, yeah, right there. Hard. Dirt foot. Yeah, I wish it wasn't dirty. But know? I think that's part of the character. Honestly, it's a foot double. No, it might be. It might be. It might be her. It's a foot double, dude. You know why? Because if it was actually Margot Robbie's foot, they'd have just zoomed out and shown Margot Robbie. It mm. wouldn't just show the feet. Because they, they know. You know what I mean? Give the people what they want. Mm. Good logic there. Okay. Good point. Good point. Okay. What else we got? <laughs> I feel like we peaked, frankly. <laughs> yeah, we were peaking at a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. All right, do we have any other thing before we get out of here? I mean, we could talk about Taylor Swift. We could talk about... I mean, there's nothing really like fun, Yo. silly, goof, but... Um, look. All right, stop. Collaborate. <laughs> Listen. Ice is back with a brand new invention, something. That's a hold of me tight. <laughs> you want to just bow out? Yo, we could bow out, but here's the thing, like... How long are we at? 220. Would you smash Margot Robbie if she was your yes. cousin? I mean, that's easier for Al and me because we would just, she'd be adopted. But like, no, 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 cousin. no, 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 no. First cousin? First cousin? First blood cousin. You gotta understand, back in the day, that was normal. Huh? That was normal back in the day. Cousin fucking is just normal. I agree with you. Now, Rami has a great joke about that, actually. Mm -hmm. He does. Yeah. But I'm curious about this with Margot Robbie because- How far back in the day when it was this normal? 90s. <laughs> <laughs> about mid 90s. About the time when I was born, I think. <laughs> um, so I'm curious because Margot Robbie is someone's cousin and they have to act like they, they have to do the whole thing. Well, oh, my cousin, dude, yeah. didn't talk about no, that. No, bro. <laughs> I've known it since I was a kid. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Margot, or whatever her name is. You know, what is that, a stupid accent? <laughs> no. 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 I'd never what? suck a dog's. No. You didn't even put a dog's in me mouth. No. You're crazy. We Maggie. <laughs> whatever. What is it? What is it? You're Margo? making her Scottish. I don't know why. Oh, yes? yeah, I don't know how to yeah. do Australia. All right. Yeah. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> it's me cousin. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I went away from it. All right. Anyway, so that person has to act like he wouldn't smash, but he would. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But we wouldn't fuck our cousins. No. No. It's because they're ugly. That's yeah. the thing that, that that's the thing that we, that's the thing. My cousin's not no, Margot no, no, Robbie. No, no, no. That's the thing that we have to acknowledge. Is there's a hotness level. Yeah, they're not ugly, but there's a hotness where it's like, yo, yo, what yo, I'm yo son, do. you called Gandhi. 11 year old fucker. You can't just say your cousin's is dog shit ugly. <laughs> cousin's a rotten tomato, bro. Be honest. Yo, Miles likes my cousin, yo. Oh, yo different oh, not one. Not that one. Not that one. Different one. That one ain't oh, even related to you. Yeah, it's nah. not even a real cousin. Yeah, she is. So, no, that dude, he could get it. The dude shit. is hot. Yeah, and with yeah. that, there you go. Dude is hot. Yeah. So, yeah. gay incest ain't even that bad. Facts. Well, you can't reproduce. There's no, yeah, there's no cause. That's a great point. Facts. Okay. I don't think gay incest should be bad. illegal. Illegal. <laughs> Male to female, yeah, and then girl is. You like can understand same. why people think it should be illegal, though, right? Because well, they're cousin. like, you yeah, we just cousin. we just made gay legal like 2006. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, be, hopping into this mag. That's quick. you're right. You're yeah, right yeah, about yeah. that. No, no, I agree with you on that one. But I do think we just we just don't have beautiful enough cousins where it makes sense which hurts your heart to say <laughs> but you all said it this is so weird God, yeah, true. you either go my cousins are fine <laughs> right you either say yo my cousins are hot yeah or and i would you know what i mean but even if they're hot they're not margot robbie but what i'm saying is there's a level mm -hmm. we acknowledged before there's a level where we would smash and then we go will we smash our cousins so we're saying we don't have super hot cousins that's what yeah, we all yeah, saying yeah, right yeah, now yeah. right sorry <laughs> sorry schultzes <laughs> do you know what i mean but I, I no can we talk about like third and fourth cousins now 
Now, now, Alex. <laughs> now, now, Alex. Now we talking. Now, Alex. You think I'm gonna let my 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 dad's sister's cousin get in the way <laughs> of some pussy? <laughs> <laughs> you know what Alex, come Bro. on. Where's his second cousin? I don't even know. But all I know is that at my grandmother's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Floor seats to the next. <laughs> I was showing up fly as Bruh. fuck. This was a good, what, maybe 10, 15 years ago. That Talk was that just shit. one that came. Talk that none shit. Of, none of us have ever met her. Talk. Somehow she was related to us. Shit. All the cousins was like, yo, who is Thirsty. that? Thirsty. <laughs> Thirsty. <laughs> Talking about, yo, we go for drinks. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was that bad. Yeah. I'm you. But what's wrong no, with she that? was that bad. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with I that? I just pray uh, she's like She probably looks four. like her mom, and you and your uncle got the same taste. <laughs> That's just doing mad uh, uncles away. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh, you think hey. she was second or third? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that, that point, that's a stranger. That's a stranger. I yeah. found some data, by the way. Okay. Children of first cousin unions have an increased risk of genetic disorders. Do you want to know what percentage? Two to three percent. Nothing. That's nothing. Two to three percent. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying, bro. That's negligible. In some parts of the world, 20 to 60 percent of all marriages are between close biological relatives. Whoa, that's a little weird. That's most of human existence, bro. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gene pool is shallow over yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's what it is, dog. We're smart. Maybe that's why. Two percent. Is it worth it, Margo? Yeah. Two percent? Yeah. Two percent? Yeah. If she was your sister. <laughs> Yeah, just end it right on that. 